Happy New Year! Well, actually, I'm a bit reluctant to say Happy New Year after this time last year. I was still going Happy New Year and didn't know what 2020 would be. But anyway, I hope everybody is bright-eyed and bushy-tailed with us. Everyone this morning, I said, did you see the New Year in? Oh no, I went to bed really early. Oh no, I went to bed really early. Even my mum's texted me this morning and I don't think she made it up till uh, midnight. So, we want to do a bit of a roll call this morning. Who is with us? Who has managed to stay awake? Um, did everybody have um, a lovely New Year's Eve? I know it's different to most years, but hopefully everybody's feeling, um, everyone's feeling good. So come on in and say hello to us today. And we've got the nicest New Year's Day show. It's the best show because I'm going to be really busy, you know. I've literally got guests galore, three guests today. There isn't an hour where I'm on my own. So what a great way to start the new year. Maybe it's a new uh, craft, a new hobby. Maybe you are new to us. Then it's going to be demonstrations galore today. Starting off the morning nice and easily with uh, a, a, some nice hand sewing, embroidery. We've got quilting. We've got dressmaking. We've also got crochet coming up later on. Um, Nitty Critters are back with Yarn Lane, our first edition of Yarn Lane of 2021. So really excited about today. I think we're starting the new year off right, aren't we? Oh, Laurie, you're our first message of 2021. Happy New Year. Lots of love. Thank you ever so much. No, don't be singing that constantly. Cat's all, already singing ABBA, Happy New Year in my ear. But we only know that one line, don't we? We only know the one line. Right. Shall we do the first early bird of the year? We're going to start, as we mean to go on and bring you a brilliant early bird today. So we will talk about, of course, different choices on marking tools. Oh, that was a good start to 2021, Elliot, wasn't it? I told you that he was going to be a bit worse for wear. He actually didn't make it up till 12 o'clock and you said you had big plans of uh, partying in the living room last night. He says, I had a text off my girlfriend who was in the other room just saying, well, Happy New Year then, because <laughs> she stayed up and Elliot went to bed. Happy New Year, Sam, as well. Happy New Year. So, marking tools. We all have different personal preferences and there's no sort of right or wrong. It's just good to be, try, well, try different ones. Uh, Catherine was just saying, I finally bought myself a friction pen. I'm going to try it out. So if you do want to, to use traditional chalk, I just think if you're buying a chalk bar, the only reason I'd normally be put off by chalk is because it can be quite messy. Whereas having it in a pencil like this is ideal. Um, it does have the lid as well. So if you are putting this into a pencil case with all your other marking tools, it's ideal. Dressmakers traditionally obviously use chalk for transferring any of your embroidery patterns or just making any of your markings. It is, uh, it, it is a great option because it's just easily removed with a damp cloth. So it says here it's 100% water soluble chalk, no dyes or wax added, glides smoothly across fabric to produce long lasting fine lines. Yeah, you're gonna be able to get some great control with this and depending on whether you're, what color fabric you're using, you've got a choice of white and silver pencils in here, plus your sharpeners as well. And the first thing that Kat said to me was make sure you turn the sharpener instead of the pencil, which I've never heard before, but she says it makes a cleaner cut and less breakage. So there you go. These are your Rocks and Sharp and Cap pack. So you've got all four of your pencils, which are going to last ages, aren't they? Absolutely ages. Um, and you get your little pencil sharpener, which also comes with one of these handy, handy little um, tubs at the top. So you're not a little catcher. So you're not getting all of your sharpenings everywhere in your pencil case. And it does leave a really, really lovely, fine line. You can do very accurate lines. So even if you're, you're new to quilting and you're marking out your quarter of an inch line or any of your quilting lines, quilting patterns, any notches, um, uh, as I say, we're going to be doing dressmaking later on with Mark Francis today as well. So these are going to be ideal for, for dressmakers. Just £9.99. pence. So for anybody who is new to us, Welcome to Sewing Street. You only pay one person packaging all day, so we always start the show with a bang. 8 a.m., lots of people tune in, especially to see what the early bird is. We offer you a saving while stocks last, so you're getting a three pound saving on these today, which is great, isn't it? 
three pounds. Start the show with a bang. As I said, we've got demonstrations galore today. Some lovely kits, great product, and just lovely, lovely guests. So come on in. We um we said we should just get everyone in here all in one go and just have a nice big chin wag. It's all we've been doing for the last couple of hours. Um, Laurie, Sam, good morning. Tina said uh, uh, we have been prepping, obviously as well, but we've also just been having a lovely chat and a cup of tea this morning. Tina said Happy New Year, Vicky, and all the team. Happy New Year to you too, Tina. I hope this year is a is a healthy, happier New Year. A happier New Year. Debbie message saying good morning, Happy New Year, Vicky. Thank you ever so much. Happy New Year to you too. Deb has said Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, do you know what? It's all about just trying to be a bit more positive. Put your best put foot forward. Um, it will be better. Come on, we can do it. We've just got to all make sure we get out of bed the right side um, this year. I know it was a strange year last year, but at least we can say it was last year. It was last year. And I know it's still uncertain times at the moment, but we can get through it together if we got through the whole of 2020. Um, we've also had a message from Elizabeth. Good morning, Elizabeth. Happy New Year, everyone at Sewing Street. Here's to another year of great shows. There you go, love it. Thanks, Princess Hungry Tummy. Looking forward to new baby as we are. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. That's so lovely. Um, I must say, it is, um, it is all of a sudden become very, very real. I've, I've, I've said to Catherine this morning, I, I kind of gave myself until this year to start thinking about it or worrying about it. And now I'm like, I'll sort it next year. We'll think about it next year and I'll deal with that next year. And now it's next year. So it is very, very um, real all of a sudden, Elizabeth. I had a message from Sharon. Uh, Sharon's messaged in saying Happy New Year, Vix, Elliot, um, and Kat, and, and uh, another fantastic crafty year ahead. Oh, we've got big plans this year as well at Sewing Street. We've got a lot going on. So, a big change for you, Vix. I know, I know, I know. From Frosty Southampton, it was ever so icy this morning, but we're saying it's a bit more. I don't know whether it's just because we've been used to really cold weather the last few days, but it's, it's a bit warmer today. Um, if you want to message in, just as everybody else has been, you can do it on our website, www.sewingstreet.com. Uh, click Watch Live, and on the right-hand side, you'll see the early bird. Underneath the early bird, you can send in any messages to me, Catherine, Mark, Francis is here as well. We've got Claire from Nitty Click Critters. We've also got Kat and Elliot in the gallery, if you do want to come in and say hello to us. We're going to make today's show as interactive as possible. Um, Margaret, can you do me a favour? Can you email studio at sewingstreet.com and we will pass it on to the right people for you. Thank you for your message. Please send it in to studio at sewingstreet.com. In fact, if you want to send any of your messages or photographs, that's the email to do it. Why are you um, asking for pictures of people's breakfasts, Cat, already? She's saying, what are people eating for breakfast? Are you having a fry up this morning? She says, normally New Year's Day, is do, having a fry up and going for a nice walk. I was going to go for a walk yesterday afternoon because it went really sunny, but then um, it was so cold, it was bitter cold. Hi, Angela D. Happy New Year to all. Happy New Year, everybody. I've got loads of messages. Oh, we've got loads of demonstrations today. Irene said, Good morning. Happy New Year to you all. So, Today is a bit of a jam-packed day. Check out on the early bird, but shall we get going? We've got all of this to look forward to. Eight o'clock, elegant embroidered cushions, and they are really beautiful with Catherine Wright. At nine o'clock, we've got Mark Francis from the Great British Sewing Bee. Did everyone watch it last night? I watched half of it and then I thought, right, I need to, um, it wasn't on last night, it, it, was the, um, it was the celeb one, wasn't it? It was really good though, really good. I watched half of it, so no spoilers please. That's at nine o'clock. At 10 o'clock, we've got the circus top quilt, which wait until you see, it is amazing. In fact, that's the one that I would urge you to go to pre-orders. Have you put it on pre-order? The bundles are on pre-order if you want to, to have a, a quick scout through on the website of those. 11 o'clock, I've already nabbed this coat. <laughs> Sorry, Amy, Elliot's girlfriend. Elliot says, oh my girlfriend would love this coat. It's so, where is it? Behind this side. It's so gorgeous. It is so gorgeous. And Mark Francis came in and he said, it might even fit you, Vic. It might even fit you with your big bump. Um, so, and I tried it on and it's gorgeous. It's so nice. Um, it's boiled wool and it's absolutely lovely. So I, I absolutely love that coat. That's at 11 o'clock. 
And then at 12 o'clock is the first edition of Yarn Lane. We've got Claire joining us from Nitty Critters with brand new kits. So we've we've seen we've seen some of the kits before. We've never seen these. The monkey, the llama is amazing. Oh, look at them all. There's the bear tumble Ted. The sausage dog, that is amazing. And, oh my word, I mean, does it get any more fabulous than that? That's Flo, the flamingo. And there's more, I mean, there's so much coming up in that show. So anybody who wants to get into to crochet, um, Kat and I have already said this year, well, Catherine's already volunteered to come in and do a crash, a crash course with us. These are all the kits that we've got coming up in the 12 o'clock hour. So stay with us all morning. It's going to be a busy, busy show. So let's get going. Starting off, with embroidered hearts and cushion. Have you got a picture of it, Elliot? We're just gonna keep you busy, 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 Elliot. I'm having a nice a nice um, chill. It's absolutely beautiful. This is the charcoal option. So we've got exclusive panels. What I love about this panel, for anybody who wants to do a nice bit of mindful, slow stitching, let's face it, look, I know that we're entering a new year and we're really excited for 2021, um, but we are still going to be spending more time at home this first part of the year. These are lovely. When you think hand sewing, sometimes you could be stitching away for months and months or years, and that's lovely to be able to pick something up and put it down. Whereas this is actually still quite a nice quick project. So you get your cushion front and you can see you've got all of your markings on the front ready to stitch over, which we're gonna be demonstrating as well. Plus, you've also got your heart hanging. Uh, so your decorative heart front uh, and the reverse as well. Everything that you need is there. Look at the different contrasts as well. So you've got one cushion, two heart decorations as well. The back of the cushion is lovely. And it's all the same motif that you're going to embroider onto the front. Great attention to detail. And I know I said last yesterday, we all make, need to make sure that we are um, putting plenty of labels on all of our makes that we've been doing over the last year. It has been the year of crafting, hasn't it? Um, plus, your all important instructions create this beautiful embroidered heart cushion with these step in step step by step instructions from sewing street so it is exclusive to us all of your instructions it does give you photographs of how to um uh, of, of how to do the stitches written by catherine so you know that it is ever so thorough very clear but also we've got today's demonstration which we will be going through everything you need to know two of the colorways very quickly before we uh, head over to catherine we've got the purple and we've got the green olive is beautiful let's do olive once again you have your instructions let me uh open this out <laughs> olive they're they're both fighting over who said that joke first Oh, I, I, I love this, they're saying. Uh, the colour is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. In fact, this is a similar colour to what Mark's shirt is. The shirt that he's making later on, we're all debating, is it grey or is it green? Is it grey or is it green? This is definitely greener than the other one, but it's still that lovely grey-green. One cushion, two hearts. You've got enough to be able to do, um, you know, a lovely size cushion and your embroidery over the front as well. Nineteen ninety nine. that's a great price, isn't it? Really good price for an accent cushion. Uh, I think when you take the Christmas decorations down, which was my plan yesterday, we didn't get round to it. So, might be doing it, might be doing it later. I don't know if I want to wait until the sixth cat. I don't know why. I just feel like now I need a fresh start this year now. Fresh start, I'm taking my decks down. But it's always a bit bare, isn't it, when you take the decorations down? Having a lovely cushion like this would be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so there your um that's your olive colorway and then purple is this one oh okay it's like a pale plum elliot's saying uh this is lovely he doesn't look as dapper by the way as he did yesterday he's got his cap on and hoodie on today we're a bit let down i'm still wearing my sparkles i thought no you yeah you've um got to still wear a bit of sparkles haven't we to start the new year I must say, I had so many messages when I came off air about that top yesterday. My mum was so pleased. 19.99 for your embroidered cushion panel. So once again, two hearts and a cushion for 19.99. Plus, you're getting your instructions. 
you have all of your full instructions which have got photographs, uh, they've got how to do the different embroidery stitches, how to construct the heart decoration, it's all in there, £19.99. And so if you do have any questions uh, about the embroidery or if you've got any questions for Catherine, get them in this hour. £19.99. Now obviously um, you might have a cushion pad or some stuffing already in your stash that you want to that you want to use so we didn't put it into the kit just in case you've already got it at home but if you do want some recycled toy stuffing it's just useful to have in your stash isn't it if you've opened your order already it's one of those that I would absolutely add to your order in an eco, um, of course, we're all thinking a bit more about being a bit more sustainable, thinking more about um, being eco-friendly. Uh, therefore, we're really excited about launching some great products this year, including a recycled polyester craft um, filling for toys and cushions for £4.99. And, and it's really soft. It's really, really beautiful. To say that it's made from plastic bottles, it's really soft. Four pounds and ninety-nine pence. A couple of skeins, and then we'll move over to Catherine. So um, we've got the white, which is this white again, cat. It's like a optic white. I don't know how to describe it. It's got like a bit more of um, a sheen to it. It's slightly pearly. Um, it's lovely. It's called white. It is your DMC skein. Um, which I know there was a bit of a debate on um, on the, the page yesterday with uh, with Becky Alexander Frost, who's one of our guest designers, and she was saying, right, what 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 um, hand sewing threads should I use? DMC or and loads of people were saying DMC it is beautiful quality. It's only one forty nine. Um, we've also got the purple, which will go with all of the colours. Actually, it will go really nicely with the plum because it's darker. It will look lovely with your grey, and it will look really nice with olive. But there's loads of DMC skeins on the website if you do want to have a look. Just so you know, Olive and Charcoal are currently neck and neck. Check out as soon as you can because me and uh, Catherine are going to be having a nice little chat today, aren't we, Catherine? It's lovely, um, a lovely show to be part of, actually, New Year's it Day. Is, it is. Happy New Year. Happy Vicky. New Year. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Did you have a nice Christmas? I had a lovely Christmas. Yeah, it seems nice to have flown chilled. by. I've got my tree down. How well, it kind of took itself down. It was so dead. Oh, did you like, put it up early? It, no, it was just quite, quite dead. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like the the uh, the, the uh, decorations were dropping off by oh. themselves. So it was like, okay, time, time to go. Time to take it down. Time yeah, to go. I think you know, it's it's <laughs> nice to just have a fresh start, isn't it's, it, into the yeah. new year? Yeah. Um, oh, the quilt behind you, by the way. Can we just quickly know, talk isn't about it fabulous? That? Yes. Now it's foundation paper piecing. It is. No, I, I, did not make, I did not make this one, I have to say, <laughs> but it's beautiful and um, it's, it's really fun to make. We're looking forward to showing you that later on. Amazing. We've got yeah. two kits, by the way, which are on the website already. Lots of people looking at those. So if you do want to make the most of it, we've got two great kits for that quilt. Uh, so the cushion, uh, do you do much? I know that you obviously do your knitting and crochet. Do you like to do I hand love sewing? doing hand embroidery. Yeah. I really do because it's really relaxing. Yeah. It really slows you down. Yeah. yeah. I think that's it's, one thing that 2020 taught me is to just slow down a bit. Yeah. I like it's it because I can sit and do it while the telly's on, which yeah. is nice. Um, you know, and just kind of sit with some music on, so it's nice and relaxing. And this is a lovely one, it's not hard. It's not hard, but it looks amazing. Yeah, and even you say your 16 year old daughter loved this one. She did. She was like, oh, mum, I like that. I said, sorry, no, not yours. <laughs> it does look really beautiful. And I really like the way that with the, the panel, or with the back of the cushion, it, it, it echoes that same design. It's, it's clever. It's a really nice design, isn't it? And the two hearts have got slightly different designs on yeah. that pick out from the, the main one. So I've made up one of them and today I'm going to show you the other one on the olive green. Yeah, there, so you can see on the reverse, it's the same It's the same embroidery um, motif that's then echoed onto the fabric, which I, I love, real attention to detail. The olive, just so you know, is in the lead. The olive's in the lead, the purple is the one that I'm looking at now as your graphics live for. So, um, for anybody who hasn't done much uh, hand embroidery before, it's still quite a relatively quick project, isn't it? It's not something you're going to sit for months and oh, months. Oh gosh, no, no. It's it's stitching. yes, it's it's fairly nice and quick, especially the little hearts. Yeah. So they're a nice a nice, nice starting start point if you've not done it before. Um, 
you only need two stitches so I'm going to show you the two stitches same stitches in the heart as it is in the cushion absolutely okay yes uh, so we're going to do a back stitch and we're going to do a French knot lovely um, your cotton we've got two strands um, right, so your stranded so, cotton comes so with it, six, isn't it? It comes with six, yeah. and then you can split them apart. Is so there a way of doing that without tangling? You just Catherine. have to do it gently. So if you pull out the two that you want, and you're just going to very carefully do it, and you can see how it wants to kind of curl up on itself. If you stop every so often and just gently kind of pull it back, then you can do it without it getting tangly. So... Yeah, it's a, it's a don't rush it job to get those strands apart nicely. It's going to tangle up, isn't it, because I'm doing it mm -hmm. on the telly. Bounty. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice. I, I love having it, especially to start the new year. There we go. Nice, just do something a little bit mindless. So, just like, just like that, your two strands. Okay. Now, I've actually got one threaded up. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> I was sat just outside going, I can't see the needle. Yeah. I better, better thread it up ready. Okay. Um, I have tied a knot in the end. Okay. You can either tie a little knot or what you can do is leave a tail on the back and then weave that in at the end. But You're this doing is it without a hoop as I well. I am doing it without a hoop. That's my personal preference. Okay. I like to kind of feel what I'm doing. Yeah. If you like a hoop, do it with a hoop. Okay. You know, every, everyone has their way, don't they, that yeah. they like to do it. I just kind of quite like to get my Could hands in there. Could you just go to your left slightly? Yes. There oh, we that's go. That's perfect. Thank you. There we go. So I'm going to bring my, we're going to start with a back stitch. I'm going to bring my needle up slightly forward because we go back first before we go forward again. Okay. For a back stitch. So just bring that. And this is one up. that's really uh, useful to know, isn't it? Actually, because it's it, comes it up is because it's um it's an outline stitch. You sort of in a, in hand embroidery. I mean, there are millions and millions of stitches, but actually, you have about half a dozen that you use all the time. Right. Back stitch being a really nice outline stitch. So you've brought it up, and then you're going to go back first, and then you're going to bring your needle up the same distance in front of your thread. So, and pull that through, and then we're going to repeat. So you go back first, and then forward. Is there a is there a certain place that you should start? You know, when you're quilting, and they say to start in the centre and work out. When you're doing hand embroidery, is there a certain position or motif part to start? Um, on these, I don't think it matters really. They're not big enough that I think they're going to get distorted as you do it. So okay. sometimes they say that because, it, you know, I mean, with a, cro with a cross stitch, you're following a chart. Mm. So if you start in the middle, you're not going to lose track and it's going to fit on. But this, you've got your outline Which is already great. for you. So it doesn't really matter where you're going to go. Okay. And because it's not huge, it's not going to get sort of scrunched up and pulled out of shape as you do it and get distorted. So I would say, doesn't really matter. I actually started at the bottom on this. You can see I'm working my way up. So we're just going to back stitch around these little curls. You can see that I've done the large part of this bit already so that it's not too tedious you watching me do back stitch. <laughs> People are buying multiples just so you know. They but are lovely. They are cushions. ever so pretty. Um, I mean that grey, it's called charcoal, but I think it's softer than charcoal. It is, it's it is. such a, they're such pretty colours. They're so gentle actually. Yeah. And I don't know, this this January, I think we're all gonna be a little bit hibernating in a nice way. And I think we can make it quite a nice, you know in the darkness stay at home and just do really nice cozy things and this is one of them ah oh, i like that's the how i feel yes yeah. absolutely feel, you know, let's let's use it as an opportunity to actually just really enjoy yeah having winter in your house <laughs> yeah that's i don't it. like winter much i'd much rather stay in indoors mm. and snug yeah absolutely so a nice few nice cozy. projects to keep you going that's what we all need isn't it this is perfect Oh, Margaret, congratulations. She says, Happy New Year to all at Sewing Street. You are fantastic. You're fantastic, Margaret. She said, my new grandson was born yesterday. Oh, oh congratulations. Welcome to the world, Bobby. Oh, my oh. word. She says, all is well in my world. That is so exciting. Oh, you need to get Bobby the bunny. Bobby the bunny. We've had Delphine's Bobby bunny, haven't we? Oh, Bobby, that's a lovely name. Oh, how exciting, Margaret. Congratulations. Look, he's watching Mark Francis. 
Mark Francis is watching. He's eagerly awaiting in the green room. <laughs> Right, and we're going to finish this little bit of back stitch and then I'm going to show you how to do the French knots. And I've just come round this little spiral. Oh, the grey with a variegated thread. You could really play around with oh, the different colours, couldn't you, thread. on this one? Oh, gorgeous, yes, yes. Yeah, you could do different colours, different coloured petals if you want to make it, you know, you could do quite a bright rainbow sort of springtime, couldn't you? Lovely yellows and bright oranges. Well, you could, and you could do different bits in different colours. So you could do your daisy yeah. in one colour. Yeah. And then your little almost spirally leaves in a different colour. Yeah. Right then, so where these little dots are, we're going to do a French knot. People do sometimes come a little bit unstuck with a French knot. So it's all about keeping your cotton nice and tight. So you can see I've brought my thread up through the work and I'm mm -hmm. going to hold the needle with the thumb of my left hand nice and close to where the threads come up. And I'm going to wrap it round. How many times? Well, I'm doing it two times on this because I don't want them to be huge. They're not huge French knots on this particular project. If you want them to be bigger, wrap it round more times. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't tend to do it more than four generally. This one I'm going to do two. Right, we're going to hold it nice and tightly, draw the needle back and go back down near where it came up. And as you pull it through, it should pull nice and tight. That looks simple because I know a lot of people get a bit um, stuck with French knots, don't it's, they? Yeah, the only reason when they go wrong is if you, when you pull that needle back to go back down, if, it's, if your thread goes loose. Right. So it's all about keeping it nice and tight. Can you see I've kind of got it quite tight in this hand as I pull the needle back and that keeps it tight and not, you don't get that funny loop then. Right. That's the trick to it. Just keep You've it. You've got a few, a few to practice on here as You've well. You've got quite you? a few. I've got about, I've got eight on this bit to do. And it, I think it always adds lovely texture, doesn't it? I mean, I really like putting French knots on patterned fabric as well. It, it, it really looks lovely. They're, they're just one of those cool little embroidery stitches that are really useful, look nice. Hi, um, Gabriel. Happy New Year to Sewing Street and Yon Lane. Enjoy uh, today. New beginnings for um, positive Sewing Street year and goodies to buy and craft with. Honestly, this year is going to be amazing with Sewing Street. We've got loads. Pat has said, Happy New Year to everyone at Sewing Street and looking forward to the new demonstrations. Keep up the good work. We've got demonstrations galore all day today. And Clive, Happy New Year. Clive, did you stay up till midnight? Did anybody stay up till midnight? I want to know, did anybody actually see the new year in this year? Somebody did worry, because I heard fireworks last night at 12 o'clock. That woke me up. Um, hello, Heather. Happy New Year to all its own street. Love the shows. Thank you, Heather. Love your company. Thank you for your company. Sarah uh, said, Happy New Year, everyone. I'm looking forward to lots of new ideas and demonstrations. This is what's brilliant, is that we've got today something for everybody. It's a really nice varied show, isn't it? Yeah, nice variety. Patchwork, dressmaking, crochet. You do oh, it all, don't you? Everything. Yeah. I love it all. Yeah. I, I, I haven't found a craft I don't like yet. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all good. That's what's so nice, though, and there's always something new to have a go at. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And give it a try and find something else and, and different things for different occasions and things. I was saying, wasn't I? I've got to make some quilts this year. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got some friends who have got biggish Big birthdays. birthdays. We're not, we won't mention numbers. <laughs> we don't want to appear too old. But I think, I think I'd think i like to make some quilts for people because they're a really lovely thing yeah, to Yeah, really give. special. But yeah. I'm not the speediest because I get... You need to get cracking then, I don't need to you? get cracking, yeah. Yeah, so I get, you know, waylaid doing things like projects for Sewing Street. <laughs> well, that's it, exactly. And you're a mother of three. You're a busy, busy lady. It's like you're saying, it's it's actually been, I suppose, a, a real... I know Sewing Street has, has helped so many people at home, but also keeping us sane this year, you normally would do lots of um, workshops and things like that, wouldn't you? I was, yes. We, we've, been, we've been Zooming a few. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's quite interesting teaching sewing via Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, yeah, and those people have got into it. We've all it had to is. learn this new and normal, haven't really, we? I mean, that is brilliant. I love that people have found, um, you know, craft 
where perhaps they would think it wasn't for them or they've not had the time to do it and they've discovered actually it's just a really relaxing thing to do um, and that's just fantastic because yeah. that's what I like to advocate to people that it's just good for you doesn't matter if you're any good at it as long as you enjoy it give it a go that's my philosophy that's, that's how Kat feels about singing but I keep telling her no just try something else do something else. Well, I quite like to sing too. Can you sing? Catherine? Well, not very well, but, but I like enjoy it. I like music and okay. I like to do it. And um, I, I'm usually in a choir at this. Oh, at, yeah, just that's for this, what I've missed this, from January Christmas. through to Easter. Oh, really? Um, yeah, but they're going to do it virtually, so I'm quite excited. Oh, because we will still get to do it. Because you see, you see, what happens is because I do this for my job. Yeah it's not really my relaxing thing yeah so i have to have a relaxing thing yeah so singing in the choir is my relaxing Aww. thing i mean it is it's, 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 i still do stuff for me that is relaxing but you know you can see what i'm saying it's good to have something that's completely different isn't it it um it just shows doesn't it that we're, we're proving you can have a chat as well whilst you whilst you're stitching well absolutely i really like it when um when I do have hand stitching classes, yeah. because it's it is everyone just sits around and it's so sociable, yeah. um, and you put the world to rights. <laughs> I know a lot of people that can't sit and watch the telly without doing something with their hands, so it's nice to be able to have something to the side of the sofa. That if you are sitting down and having a bit of a you know a nice chilled time, you can still absolutely be doing some stitching, That's... watching a film with being sociable. And it stops you eating as well. <laughs> If, like me, you've done nothing but eat oh, for gosh. about the last week, then it does stop you eating if you've got something to do with your hands. So I've got one little bit left to do, and then we're going to put this heart together. So you can see it has not taken me very long to do that top part. No, absolutely. At all. And so if you run out of thread, if you're doing all of this and you run out of thread, is it quite easy to then start again and, and reattach? Absolutely. Yes, you wouldn't get you wouldn't manage a whole design with one lot. No. So when you get to the end, I'll show you how to finish it off in a minute when I get to the end of this little spiral. Um, Hi Pauline, happy new year. Yes, we stayed up, she said. Well done, Pauline. In the moment, you're the only person that stayed <laughs> up till 12 o'clock. Um, saw the Wembley Stadium fireworks though, my win through my window. Oh my word. Oh. How exciting. Whereabouts are you then? Um, and watch the rest on TV. Still freezing, no heating or hot water. Oh. Did you see the foot cozy yesterday? We did give you a shout out and said, right, we need to get Pauline one of these because she's without heating. Oh, oh bless you. <laughs> Very cold. Um, we've had a message from Sharon as well. Oh, there you go. Sharon stayed up as well. She said, hi Vic, stayed, um, stayed up, open front and back door to make sure last year blew away. Good idea. I've heard lots of different people talking about um, sort of traditions or superstitious things that they do My in the new year. My mum always brings in, it's a bit of coal okay. and, oh I'm trying to think, could be a bit of wood, I don't know, she has a little, she has a little... Your mum will be watching, She will she? be watching. Uh, you'll have, to, be message in, at the have to message in mum what it is. I know there's a bit of coal because she keeps the same piece from year to year okay. and you bring it in at the back door. Ah. For something, yeah. I can't remember what, but she does that without fail every single year for good luck. Oh. Someone will know what it is. Oh yeah, come on, we need all of these. We need all of these different things now that we're going to all try this year. Uh, we've <laughs> also had a message come in from Hilary. Hi Hilary. Happy, hopeful and healthy new year. Yes, I love that. Uh, Sewing Street has inspired me to try so many different techniques and projects, including embroidery and crochet. Oh. Fantastic. This is what I love. There's a lot of people who maybe had done a lot of sewing in the past, but had just been solely dressmaker or just been solely quilter. And everybody's sort of trying, dabbling new different things, which is I've lovely. I've done a lot more bags. Right. I've got much more into bag making. Oh, brilliant. Because Sewing Street have asked me to do bags, so that's cool. Oh, lovely. Right, there we go. The embroidery is finished. I just tied so a little knot on the back. I did it really quickly, didn't I, without showing you. But if you were going to start again, little knot, weave the end through. Little knot, snip it off, and then you can just start your next one. Okay. Okay, so we're going to cut out all our different little bits now. You've got your outline ready for you. So you can That's what's handy, isn't it? It's all there it's ready all for there you. It's all there for you. It's, it's cool. Now, if you really liked the design as well, there's nothing to stop you yeah. 
making a tracing of it before you stitch it. So you yeah. could use it again, couldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'm thinking what you could do, if you want to make two cushions, you could do, use just a plain white, white, uh, it, it's on the website, just plain white cushion for your backing. And then you've got two cushions that have got that embroidery motif, that same pattern on the front of, of, of both, that's, couldn't that's you? That's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, make yeah. it go a long way. Then you've got two big cushions because you get enough in the uh, in the panel to be able to do one full cushion that's front and back and two hearts front and back. But if you supplement it for your stash and use just white for the back, then you'd be able to make two cushion fronts, if you know what I mean, that are really decorative. Oh, Claudia stayed up until 1am embroidering, <laughs> so saw the new year in, um, with a poochie fast asleep on her knee. Oh, oh, that sounds a nice way. Fiona stayed up as well. She said I made a purse. She said I was gluing the clasp in. She said not a good idea at 1am. <laughs> Happy New Year from Perth in Australia. Oh, amazing. Wow. I wonder what time it is there. She said it's a sweltering 35 <gasps> degrees. Oh, too hot for Maureen. me. Too hot for me. That is very hot, Maureen. <laughs> Hi, Christine. We've had loads of lovely messages. Happy New Year to you all. I sat up watching sewing videos on YouTube from 4.30 until people stopped uh, setting off fireworks at 1.30. And you're away now. Oh, my word. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> the fireworks woke me up as well, actually. So what are you cut cutting so out? So I've strips? cut out one strip, which is going to make the little hanging bit. So and they're labelled strips, that, aren't they? Everything's yeah. labelled on That's the panel good. for you, which is, just makes it even more straightforward. There's no, no having to no try and work it out. We'll it's measure. all there for you. Now with the cushion, the cushion that I made there, I didn't put a zip in it and a cushion pad. It is literally with the stuffing, but you could. Put yeah. a zip in and a cushion pad. I like that you don't to. need to have too many different techniques or tools to be able to do this. So for somebody who's watching Sewing Street, who's might have been watching the last few months and is now thinking, right, New Year, New Year's resolution is to start sewing or get into it. You don't actually need too many different tools. You can do this with a pair of scissors. You don't need rotary cutter or a mat or a ruler or anything even. Just yep. your needle and thread. There we are, neatly cut out. Lovely. Okay, so let me just move my stool I can get the little ironing thing up we'll just press our little hanging strappy bit first oh where's my super super small iron I love this super small iron. oh yeah the mini iron's <laughs> great isn't it okay so I am pressing in I'd say that's about half a centimeter okay on the edges and then I'm going to fold it in half and press again and top stitch it. It's always easier to do this than to try and do it and turn it round. Because oh, yeah. they're long and skinny to yeah. turn round. And life's too short. <laughs> <laughs> Just makes you cross when you're trying to like get them round, isn't it? <laughs> okay, we'll pop a no pins on here today. We'll pop a pin in just to hold that middle bit. Oh, Laurie stayed up. I was FaceTiming with my brother in the USA. Oh, Laurie, I'm pleased you managed to see the new year in. Morag says, Happy New Year, ladies. I was driving home for New Year um, on the on the bells. Oh! Go on, Kat. What are you trying to say? As in ambulance bells, blues and twos. Kat's asking. Oh, you, cause, because Morag's a carer, isn't she? She says I pick up elderly people when they fall. Oh, okay. So maybe you were drop working. Maybe working. Maybe you were working, Morag. <laughs> Trying to do detective work here, cat, aren't we? <laughs> Morning, head. Oh my word, he's up. I said my friend Tom is trying to get his top, top fan badge. Um, there's no way that he'll be here before 10 a.m. Not with the messages he was sending me after after midnight tonight. I think he was a bit wor worse for wear. He was there. Yeah, morning, hen. Happy New Year. So I've top stitched down both sides just because it looks really nice and neat. To do Lovely. That. Okay. So that's just as close to the edge. Have you done it down both sides or just I the have. one? Yeah, yep. both sides. Okay. 
down both sides just to make it look neat. I know I've got my thread matching today so you can't really see it. <laughs> um, you want to just tack it in place on the sort of dip of the heart and if you do, if you do that um, it will just hold it in place while we put the whole thing together. So I'm just going to pop a pin in to hold it. Bit of machine tacking. So is that on the wrong side of the panel or the right side? It's on the right side because we're going to stitch it all with right sides together and okay. turn it around and then it will pop out. Right. Just go across the top just to hold it in place. Okay. So embroidery goes face down on top. So right sides together. We need to... I'm just going to fold that end up, it's quite long, just so I don't accidentally trap it in. The thing I often forget to do, leave a gap to turn it round, make sure you do leave one. And the, the trick is, is to put a pin <laughs> where you want to start and where you want to stop. Because then it reminds project, you. <laughs> yeah, it's just... It's easy to get carried it? away and just go, oh, I'm sewing it up, I'm, I'm nearly done, and then leave it. So. This is what I do when I teach the children. I go, now start at the blue pin and go all the way around and end at the blue pin. It just reminds you. And you don't have to unpick anything. So I'll just pop a couple of pins in place to hold it and we will go around. I would do about a quarter inch seam, a small seam on it. Okay. You don't want to lose any of your nice embroidery, do you? No, exactly. You don't want to lose your embroidery, but it's also one that you don't need to worry too much. You're not piecing it to anything about no. your seam allowance. As and long as you're Happy relatively even. Ab absolutely. Happy New Year to you too, Anne. She says, Happy New Year to all at Sewing Street and to all of the other fans as well. Ah, oh, that's lovely. Happy New Year to you too. Had a message from Helen. Happy New Year to all at Sewing Street family. It's very cold here in Wiltshire. Oh, it was ever so cold this morning. Really cold. Um, Thank you ever so much for your message. It's one of those days, just stay in the warm. Blanket on. Kat's got a weighted blanket and she says it's lovely. So you're just going around the, the curves by sort of stopping, pivoting when you need to, with Absolutely. your needle down. Good thing about this machine actually is it stops with the needle in the down position, which is good. Always handy. So we've got our little gap, we're going to turn it round. No we're not, I'll tell you what we're going to do first. We are going to just clip some of the curves just because then it turns round more evenly. So I'm going to go down into that little dip but carefully, not too far because I don't want to cut through my stitching. And we'll just go round this top curvy bit. It'll just turn round more smoothly. Nice pair of sharp scissors to the point. These are my the my own dressmaking scissors that no one else is allowed to touch or use. For so is a very possessive over oh, scissors, yes, Catherine. Yes, <laughs> I didn't get it at the start. I was like, oh my <laughs> word, why is everyone really protective over their scissors? There's nothing worse than your husband deciding to open a parcel with your dressmaking <gasps> scissors. Mine doesn't. He's he's sensible. He's well trained. But I have heard <laughs> I have heard of cases. <gasps> Give it a little press and oh, then it we'll looks pop lovely the stuffing in. in. My olive. hanger's gone slightly wonky, but I think it'll be okay. It looks so nice in the olive colour, doesn't it's it? It's a really nice colour, actually. I can imagine it toning with a lot of living rooms. Yeah. Oh, they're ever so useful, though, these hanging hearts, because you could put, you could even put some lavender in it or... You could, yeah. you could. That would be nice. Hanging out I the door in the in, wardrobe. In my house, I have, um, well, it's basically a twig. Um, <laughs> that, I painted, okay. that I painted white. Right. You can buy the quite expensive ones, but I found a twig and painted it white. But I have different decorations on it all year round. So oh. at Easter, I put Easter eggs on it. Yeah. But coming up to Valentine's Day in February, I put heart decorations oh, on it. Oh, that's a lovely idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, we were saying you know, that. We've we could got, do something um, like that. We, when we were taking the Christmas decorations down, we've got the, the twig tree. And I said, well, surely we could keep that and we could decorate it all year. Yeah. That'd you said nice your mum does that. Do. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite nice. And I have some things that are on there all the time that have got nice little messages and things on. So uh, we got a message from your mum, Catherine. Oh. 
Come on, Mum, she tell says, us. Oh, bringing... She's managed to sort out the technology. <laughs> right, yes, that's very good. So she said, I bring in coal, wood, and a sixpence. That's it, yes. Does she say what it's for? No, we still don't know why, <laughs> but it's supposed to bring good luck into it the new year. It is supposed to bring good but luck. But you bring it in through the back door then? I think so. She puts it outside the back door the night before and then goes and brings it in in the morning. Right. Oh, does anybody else have any superstitious... <laughs> Good things, good luck things that you do on New Year, that w rituals that we can all try this year. Because normally, I'm not very um, superstitious like that. But this year, I'll try anything. <laughs> we'll take anything. <laughs> we'll have a go. We'll all be there with our coal and wood out the door. <gasps> We've missed it now, though. We should have done it last night and brought yeah. it in the morning. Yeah, you okay. have to You've got to wait a whole year it? now. Did <laughs> anybody else do it? Because we didn't. So please let us know if anyone else did that. So, just stuffed it with some toy filling. I've put a little bit of toy filling inside. Um, you've definitely got in your, <laughs> you got in your big that. bags, no, but you've got enough for your two hearts and, and your, your cushion. cushion. And you can say, I've still got a bit left over. Oh, great. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really nice, generous bag full, actually. It's soft, isn't it? So it's, it's gorgeous. Recycled yeah, really good. Bottles. And I'm really pleased to be using some recycled yeah. things, actually. Yeah, I'm quite into yeah. Reusing things, and then I've just pinned together the little opening, obviously with the raw edges tucked in, and I'm just going to use a little slip stitch to close it up, and then we're done. It's a lovely, lovely, nice, quick, easy project, but with a fantastic outcome, I think. Oh, let's see. I haven't got a knot in this. Don't tend to use knots. I tend to do go sort of over and over to start off. There we go. So with a slip stitch like this, you want most of your stitch to be inside and just a very tiny stitch on the top so you can't really see it. I'm using the embroidery thread because I didn't bring in you just <laughs> any normal, normal so thread, normal but pressure. actually um, I could have just taken a bit off the sewing machine, couldn't I? I would probably on my other one just use a bit of normal thread. You don't want it to be noticeable. Do you know what? I find a lovely invisible uh, stitch so pleasing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> when it's really when it small and you can't in. see it and it's just neat, yes. There's something very satisfying about it all. Kat said that was the feeling this morning when she, uh, she was driving to work this morning and hit every single green light just turned to green the whole time. She was like, it's going to be a good year. Yeah, that's, an, that's, <laughs> that's definitely it. a sign. That's it, you peaked at six <laughs> this morning. <laughs> that's it. That's all your luck done. <laughs> so, it isn't available by the half meter because look, let me show you, it's a panel. She really likes the olive colourway. Let me show you. It's a beautiful colour. It is gorgeous. Olive has been the most popular and it comes like this. So you have your cushion front, your cushion back, your heart front, your heart front and your heart backs. But as I say, you could supplement them in for plain white and have cushion front, cushion front and your white at the back of the back. Heart front, heart back. Uh, front, heart front, heart front. You could make loads, couldn't you, if you have some white in your stash. And then you've also got the strips, so you would need to add some more of those. If you, or, or, or even just use the white and have white little, um, uh, little uh, what are they called? Little straps to be able to hang it up. Hang in straps. You uh, could if you wanted to. I mean, we've cut our hearts out. But you could make them into tiny mini cushions as well. Because oh, they're yeah. in a little square, well, aren't you've they? Got lots of so you green could embroider there. around that heart shape and make it into a little little mini cushion. That's a good idea. Yeah. They're lovely, aren't they? And, and you've got loads of fabric there. You think in an armrest for under your computer? Yeah, a little wrist. Wrist, yeah, cushions. A wrist pillow. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. 1999, that's the olive one, which is very, very, very popular indeed. It's in the lead, it's gorgeous. Oh, Grey yeah. um, is just behind as well, which is the one that Catherine's working with. Um, it's called charcoal, but like you said, it's, it's not. It's, it's softer, softer though. It's, I'd call it more dove grey, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you can see it there. There it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. It is more of a dove grey, especially with the white. It looks really, really nice. So then that's There's my little heart stitched up. There it is. Yeah. 
absolutely beautiful. We love it. Um, we're going to have to hang these around the set. I was thinking we looked a bit better now we're taking all I the I think you need down. your twig to hang little things on. That would be nice, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. maybe we could um, keep that. We need to keep that out and to hang all our hanging hearts. Lovely. Is there anything else that you wanted to show you're happy? Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything particularly different about the cushion. There isn't really. Um, obviously, I embroider it just the same. And when you come to put it together, it's right sides together. Yeah. And stitch stitch all the way around. Uh, yeah, I, st gap. I stitched round, left a gap, put my stuffing in. So ever so, ever so straightforward. Yeah. If you wanted to, then you could, of course, put a zip in if you want. You or, could. Yeah, it's up to you. But uh, really straightforward. Lovely. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Right, I've had loads of, uh, of messages coming in, by the way, about um, superstitions for New Year's Eve. So opening the front and the back door to let everything all walk out one door just before 12 and then walk in the other door just after midnight. Lots of people did that last night. Have a stranger bring coal and bread. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Have a stranger. How can you do that as a tradition? Like, just get a random stranger. Like, you need to bring me coal and bread, but I don't know you, all right? What? what read that message again, Kat. I don't understand. I don't think Kat understands either. We have a stranger bringing coal and bread for warmth and what? <laughs> Substance. Substance, she's saying. What is she trying to say, Catherine? I'm not sure. I've heard of first footing. It, yes. Which is, well, is, you know, Catherine, it sounds you like welcome first a dark haired stranger in, don't you? But of course, <laughs> you don't really like have strangers come to your door, do you? Well, that's it. Morag said, Catherine, it sounds like first footing people. Done it for years. Done it for years, she said. Um, so he said, Happy New Year, everyone. I adore the olive combination. Uh, Anne uh, said, I always have trouble threading my needle. Do you have any recommendations or a gadget or anything to thread a needle? Um, well, there are th needle threaders around, aren't there? Yeah. I don't know if you guys have any, um, mm. but there's, yeah, quite useful ones. Um, and em embroidery needles, usually, if you get proper embroidery needles, they usually have quite a large eye on them. Yeah. So try a big eyed needle. Yeah. There are needle threaders out there. I don't know. Cat's having a look on the website to see if there is anything that we have. But um, keep your eyes peeled for those because they are really, really useful indeed. They are useful. Um, thank you ever so much for your messages. We will see you in an hour then. That quilt is amazing. Oh, I know. Exciting. <gasps> Already <laughs> selling, by the way. We have two different bundle combinations. Um, we've also got the pattern on its own. The bundles, just so you know, are already selling. So have a look at those on the website. We'll see you in an hour. Thank you. Right, so let's start with the olive because I've got it here. This is your Daisy Stitch Olive cushion front. Um, you've got your heart decorations as well, but yeah, they could be little cushions. Uh, you've also got your cushion back. It's enough to be able to do one big, gorgeous cushion um, or two cushion fronts if you want to add your own back. And then you also have your heart decorations um, front and back and your straps to be able to hang it up, your hanging straps, plus you get you have a little label. Um, now you also get Catherine's instructions, your Sewing so Street exclusive instructions from Catherine, uh, which has got lovely uh, photographs, uh, great detail. But I must say, we covered everything in the show today. So remember today's date, 1st of Jan. 1st of Jan, if you want to watch it back on YouTube, um, if you want to, a, a reminder of how to, to get that technique with your French knots or your backstitch. Uh, we also have it in what I'm going to call dove grey. It says charcoal. They call it charcoal, Cat say. They. They call it, I think it's someone in the office who's called it charcoal. It is like a lovely soft grey. Um, and again, beautiful, beautiful pattern. Same embroidery pattern motif. And it, it, it is also echoed onto the back of the cushion as well. So you've got your cushion front, your cushion back, your heart dec decoration front and your heart decorations back. It's really good that it's all labelled as well. So um, just so there's 
no guesswork no guesswork it's all there done for you even the fact that all of your lines on your uh, your panel are already there ready to go 19 pounds and 99 pence plus your straps again with that motif echoed and your hand label your hand stitched by label plus your instructions and that is what you're going to be able to make with that beautiful grey colour, um, along with you, your grey hearts, of course. And then, finally, do not let the purple pass you by, because this is so lovely. I actually think purple is the perfect colour for in a bedroom. That lavender tone is just so beautiful. Cushion front. Uh, Kat's saying, I would fill this with lavender as well. This would be gorgeous. <gasps> lovely for your, uh, for your bedroom or spare room. It's gorgeous. So you have your front and your back, plus you get your heart decorations, your straps, and you're getting your full instructions for £19.99. And um, I do love that colour. I think that's my favourite, you know. And with, I'm thinking with one of the purple skeins, or even a white, but remember your front is white, so have a think about what colour you want to do your... Uh, it's just an off-white, actually. It's slightly off-white, so white would still go... I think a, a contrasting purple skein would look nice. The dark purple skein is a DMC stranded cotton. If you do want to watch the show back uh, on how uh, Catherine did any of the embroidery stitches, it is all photographed in your instructions, but watch back today's show. Uh, that was your lovely deep purple. We also had the white. Now, it is up to you what colours you want to use, but we just thought if anybody needs to add any to their stash, they're only £1.50. There's loads of colours on the website and they're great quality DMC. Uh, you're already paying one post in packaging all day today, so if you've opened your order with the early bird or if you've opened your order with any of the panels or anything from the web shop, then you are eligible for one PMP all day today. Finally, Toy full filling. If you're putting your best foot forward this year and we're thinking more about sustainability and um, you know being a bit more kind to our planet, then this is recycled toy filling. Uh, it's you, it, there used to be plas plastic bottles and they're now toy filling. Perfect for your cushion, great for your hearts, also lovely um, for, for, for toy making. They're great. If I were you, I'd be stocking up on this because it's ideal to have in your stash. £4.99 and pence, and you'll have plenty to be able to do the cushion, both the hearts and have some left over. Just £4.99. and pence. Uh, There's other bits of bobs on the website if you want an embroidery hoop, if you prefer to, to stitch in a hoop, have a look. Now... Coming up, we always get requests for, I felt like I was on the news then, um, we always have requests for menswear. So, who better to do a gorgeous shirt than the amazing Mark Francis? So, dressmakers, are you ready? If you've never done dressmaking before, if you want to start out, then get all your questions in for the amazing Mark Francis. He's coming up right in just a couple of minutes. See you then. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. We'd like to say a massive thank you to all of you for supporting Sewing Street since we began this year. 2020 has been a tough year for everyone, so we are very proud of how far we have come. And we couldn't have done it without you. From starting in February for an hour a day, building up to being live for five hours, as well as launching Yarn Lane. We hope you've had as much fun watching us as we've had bringing you tutorials from our expert guests and a little bit of entertainment along the way. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year from all at Sewing Street and all the best for 2021. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. New Year's are always about trying new things, so why not try out a new hobby? 
From the 4th to the 10th of January, Sewing Street will be bringing you a week packed with demonstrations on new techniques, beginner's tutorials and brand new projects. With everything from ribbon art, making your own sleepwear, new quilting techniques and beginner's homeware makes. We have something for everyone. Sign up to our email newsletter and follow us on social media to find out what's on when. And watch our New Year new hobby shows from 8am to 1pm on Monday the 4th to Sunday the 10th of January on Freeview 72, Sky 670, our YouTube channel or Facebook Live. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn? Bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Hello, welcome back. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Why are you laughing at me, Kat, already? Oh, by the way, Maureen. Um, I think you can. I don't see why not. Maureen's asked, can I use the code for free postage in January? It's January, isn't it? So if you shopped for those six days in the first 12 days of December, then you have free shipping in January, don't you? So, yeah, it's January. Um, if you haven't had an email or if you haven't had a... Um, a code or whatever it was that you were going to get. Message the studio. If you message, email us, what we'll do is we'll pass it on to our marketing manager, Hayley, and we'll sort it for you. Um, so, yeah, how exciting. If you were involved in the 12 Days of Christmas event, then absolutely start using your code. Now, thank you ever so much to everybody who's, who's asked for us to do more men's makes because these are brilliant, aren't they? We're doing it. And as I said, it's per what more, a perfect guest to be able to do um, to do the show with the Mark Francis. Kat, oh, she's on one today. She's picking on me, left, right and centre. Right, the simplicity patterns are always brilliant. They are absolutely brilliant. Um, and this is actually similar we were saying to the to the summer shirt that mark did on the great british sewing bee actually so we've got any questions did you know mark francis was on the great british sewing bee um mark from mark from kenilworth mark from kenilworth nine pounds and 99 pence for your pattern on its own and this is really cool because you'll see in a moment when you see mark he's wearing the long sleeve version which is really smart and looks amazing in the uh in the green spot in fact we've got a photograph of him he did a photo shoot for us earlier on uh, there he is. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. And then also, if you've got some really... Oh, these... He's not... I'll tell you what, he's not bad, is he? He's not bad at, um, at photography, our Elliot. Hey! Cheeky, cheeky. <laughs> See you later, 2020. That's what that one's saying. I love it. Um, we've also got the short sleeve option. Which is this one? Gosh, you're having a right little photo shoot there going on, weren't you? He asked me to do a twirl as well, but he said not, he didn't want the campus thing ever. Oh, so no. That obviously didn't make it in. Did the twirl not make it in, Elliot? The twirl didn't make the cut, oh. no. We've also, what I really like is that you've got the short sleeve option as well. So if you do want to do a more relaxed style, summer shirt, springtime, even in some really cool out there, bright, uh, I'm thinking like Hawaiian style fabric, it would be really cool. And again, you're going to learn some great techniques today. So if you've got any questions for Mark, get them in. All of your size information is on the back. The, 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 uh, the, the pattern is suitable for lots of different cotton types. Types, such as poplin, um, chambray, batiks, linen, um, chalice, rayons. You can use this with lots of different fabric as well. So there you go. It goes from 34 to 52 inch uh, chest. The, all the waist measurements, everything is all there. Your hip waist um, chest measurements are all there as well. 
So, it's one of the first gents patterns that I've seen. We've put together some fabric bundles which we think would go perfectly. So the one that Mark was modelling there so beautifully is with this fabric. It's gorgeous it's so soft it is your it's called gray spots now we were saying we think it's got a green in it it's a deep olive green in there as well yesterday the libs elliot had a, a gray but it was like a blue gray or a green gray there's lots of different shades isn't it this is definitely an olivey green gray it's absolutely beautiful um, you get three and a half meters, which is absolutely plenty to be able to do the largest size. So even if you're not doing the largest size, um, you are going to be able to have plenty left over. And that's for A, option A, which is the long sleeve version. So you'll be able to make the biggest size with the longest sleeves with this amount of fabric. So you'll have plenty available there for $26.99. And it is your poplin weight cotton. It's so beautifully soft. Just $26.99. Um, we also have the gingham which is a printed gingham it's again rose and hubble great for summer this would look lovely in the uh, in the spring and sunshine wouldn't it it's a short sleeve option or the long sleeve option 26 pound 99 and that is a great springtime it's called mint green fingers crossed you know we're gonna have some lovely garden parties and barbecues that we can all go to this year and that would look so smart wouldn't it 26.99 back to the office maybe some new shirts and just to be able to have a personalized one that is made to measure one that fits you perfectly it's great isn't it so this is the one that mark's going to be working with so we'll see that coming together a bit more in the demo I think this is my favorite this is really cool this is a real it's something it is one that you would probably see in the shops isn't it this sort of star shirt and it's multi-directional so you don't need to worry too much about directional prints 33.99 or i suppose with pattern matching as well you don't need to worry about it um it is your rose and hobble again poplin weight cotton lovely for the long or short sleeve option for 33.99 you're getting three and a half meters of fabric which is plenty enough again to make the uh, the largest option with the long sleeves up to you if you want to do a shorter sleeve um okay then we've also got something a bit different now we were saying look if we've been being brutally honest with you it might be a bit weighty for this pattern but we know how much everybody loves our bundles of linen uh, linen shirts are always classic they're always popular it is weighty just so you're aware um we've got it in cream i'm thinking if you want to do a nice jacket though or a waistcoat or a pair of chino sort of style trousers with linen linen trousers or shorts or something to go with your nice shirt it'd look great 40 pounds and 99 pence and that is again three and a half meters for your cream uh, we also have it in blue which is like a denim color blue cream's lovely as well it is denim color blue it is a linen 100% linen but it is weighty be aware it is heavy oh hello Clive happy new year oh I mean I say it's weighty it's weighty because I'm got three and a half meters that I'm lugging around here it's a lot of fabric isn't it 40 pounds and 99 pence I think this is the one that Mark used in the jacket this color yeah yeah it was on, really on nice in the jacket show, it was, I did the jacket. it was Mark's very very first show 40.99 three and a half meters we've used it in aprons we've used it in dresses before for bags, we've used it for lots of dressmaking. It would absolutely be suitable. It's just, it is um, a heavier style uh, shirt compared to the poplin weights. Uh, 40 pounds and 99 pence. That's three and a half meters of your denim color. Oh, hope you are well, Clive. And I hope you managed to see the new year in. Um, Clive's watching, Clive's I, watching. I should hope so as yes, well. Yes, exactly. Sat at home having his breakfast happy new year happy new year to you too oh do you know i must say i've been dying to see you because it was so funny before i told everybody my news everyone was sort of speculating and thought that the show was going to be me and you singing oh did they what, yeah today? they were really disappointed <laughs> no they just said i said oh we've got a special show on friday the 18th and everyone was messaging saying oh 
Oh, I hope it's Vic and uh, Mark doing we some Christmas done carols. That. We should have made that happen. I know, I know. Well, hopefully this year will be a bit more normal, that we'll be able to get back into all our music things There's as no well. There's no normal anymore. No. Normal's it's just been new. destroyed. Well, I really hope that 2021, <laughs> for you especially, and everybody who didn't get a chance to do the exhibitions and mm. all the shows and all the workshops that you planned to do after so mm. hopefully this year will... Yeah, I mean, hopefully. I was talking to Stuart Hillard from uh, oh, was who's on okay. CMB in All right, John Seriously. Scott, just <laughs> dropping some names. <laughs> but but he was saying that he, he feels very uh, very much for us this year because we haven't been able to go and do any of those shows. And as Duke Ambassador and also uh, Vlieselian Ambassador, I could yeah. have gone and done any number of those shows up and down the country. But yeah. I said hello to people and done some workshops oh, uh, good. and all that kind of stuff. But hopefully this year and we've been lucky enough to have you as well this yeah. is amazing that we've had you here uh, so of course i mean on mark's rider list when he comes in is the jukey machine this is the, the machine that you've got at home isn't it and the blue with. sweets oh yeah and the blue skittles and the fluffy puppies um all there <laughs> ready in, in his dressing room yes but jukey is a beast isn't it it's amazing the nx7 is the the machine that mark's going to be working with and it's great to be able to do some gents patterns your shirt looks amazing it i love all, it thank you very much looks really Thank nice uh, it is nice to do a men's shirt so I did a waistcoat as well previously yeah um, but this is really nice and it's got a nice kind of basic kind of sounds quite basic shirt block so you can let lots of different alterations and put your own little mark on it if you wish right um, something which I've done is put some different fabric inside the cuffs and on the so and oh on yeah the, we'll show those accents if I, um, do, if I undo my my cuff and I've, if I just pop it down there, if I move that Is that called the, the placket? Yes, yeah, so that's the placket there. Okay. Uh, and that's just the inside of the cuff that. and it's spotty on the outside. Um, so just a little, I mean, I luckily had obviously the gr this spotty grey green and yeah. the gingham as well. So yeah. I could mix and match the two. Yeah. You might have something else uh, in, your in, in your stash that you can just pop inside the cuffs. Um, or the collar, the actual the pattern does show uh, on the short sleeve version having a pocket and a different coloured collar on there as well. So that's also another option if you wish. I didn't put pockets on mine. No. Um, I love pockets but not on shirts. Yeah. I don't I don't like them on, so I, I didn't put them on. That's well that's the great thing about making your own clothes isn't it? Is that yeah. you can personalise them to how you like them, customise them. Uh, the the collar you were saying is similar style to the summer shirt that mm. you did on the on the sewing bee show as well. Yes exactly so we, we were challenged to make a men's summer shirt. Okay. Uh, so you could do a traditional collar for that but I was thinking that's going to be fiddly and there's a good chance under a pressure situation it's going to go wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so did you I, watch it over Christmas the Christmas I did, specials, wasn't by it the brilliant? Way. Sally oh, Phillips, brilliant. so funny. Oh, uh, it was so good, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, I bet it, it was real, really nostalgic as well, just seeing it all and seeing I'm other people in the I'm very jealous of the new room. sewing room. It's fabulous, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was, absolutely. <laughs> you said the uh, celebrities got better coffee than you as well, didn't they? Well, I hope they did, <laughs> because uh, the, the art department very graciously gave us tea and coffee and sweets and biscuits already. I mean, we did drink it. Yeah. It was real tea and coffee, but some of it was a bit... You know, oh. won't have the coffee this time oh. as I can't push the plunger down. Oh, maybe Leslie Joseph <laughs> um, had that on her rider that she I'd like wanted to proper coffee. Have Hopefully, proper coffee from Harrods. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, so, what parts are we going to be looking at today? Then, obviously, so, we're not going to have a chance to do the whole shirt. No. So, I have made a little bit of a, a headway on this okay. already, so we can get through some. It's so going to have a look at the collar first of all. Hopefully, we're going to do some cuffs Lovely. as well. Uh, so, I've already sewn the shirt together at the shoulders. And there's no yoke on, on the shirt, uh, on, on the back of the shirt, so you haven't got to worry about a yoke. Okay. It's just a straight back, which is quite nice. There's no pleats in the back either, which is also... Yeah. You could also add those in if you wanted to draft your own yoke, or if you just pull the pattern piece away from the fold by an inch or two, you could then sew in a pleat along the back. Right. But it's quite a large size shirt anyway. It's mm -hmm. a very relaxed fit. Yeah. It's not a fitted shirt in any way at all. So just check the pattern as to what kind of feel you want it to yeah. have. So yeah. the size 42 actually uh, gives you a 50 inch space around the chest. So it's nice and nice and relaxed. Nice and loose. It does have lines also, so you can adjust the length of everything so you know exactly where to cut That's and where, where to change things. So I've also made the collar as well. You'll need some interfacing if you want to make it nice and crisp. I think do we is have a medium weight one okay? Yeah. This is um the hemline um medium weight 
interfacing. It's only three pounds ninety nine, so it's yeah. good to be able to stock up because it's always useful, isn't it? In your yeah, stash? yeah, yeah. This is it. You may have interfacing stash already. A lightweight one would also do. It just depends on okay. how crisp and, and what finish you want to put. Do you on use it. it in the cuffs as well? I did. Now the pattern tells you to put it over the whole cuff piece. I just did it for the outside part. Okay. I don't think you really need it on the inside, um, but you, you can do it. it. Doesn't really matter. And on, ah. Ah, in fact, you're uh, an ambassador of Visaline, aren't you? I am, yes. So there you go, there's the lightweight one from Visaline. Ah. Um, which, again, it depends on how sort of structured and crisp. If you're doing one of the more lightweight, casual sort of shirts, I suppose, would you rather use the lightweight? Yeah, if you're doing a more formal shirt, you might want to have a crisper collar to it. Mm -hmm. Or if you just want to have a light, a more relaxed one, a more summery one, or casual shirt, you could do the lightweight one. But maybe just test a little bit first, and just see how it feels, and whether you're, you're happy with that. Brilliant. I mean, I didn't put any interface in the facings at all, actually. Oh. Um, uh, for this for this purpose and actually it feels okay yeah it looks nice but. and crisp still yeah so i've made the collar already so of course we've interfaced see we i've interfaced yeah <laughs> the outside of the collar and not the inside so that's all sewn ready to go there are quite a number of ways to finish a, a collar on these kind of shirts, on, on these convertible collars. Mm -hmm. um, this is just one way in the instructions. If you do a bit of Googling, if you've got books at home, there are other ways you can do it as well. Right. Um, so what I'm gonna do, this is something which I like to do, is fold my collar in half and just snip. You, you're not left-handed, are you? They're the left-handed scissors. Are they the left-handed ones? Yeah. No, I'm not left-handed. There we go, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be wondering why I can't cut with them, yeah. haven't I? <laughs> left-handed scissors. My sister was left-handed. She had a special left-handed mug. A left-handed mug? Oh, I haven't heard that. I'm left-handed, and so, yeah, that's why I would, I would notice. I would, I would have known you were left-handed. It I had a special that. kind of face, a big ugly face on one side of the mug, <laughs> which meant that only left-handed people could hold it, because if you're right-handed, then the, the knobbly face thing got in the way of your mouth. That makes sense. Ah. And I'm going to cut a little notch out on the back of the shirt. This isn't in the instructions, this is just something I've learned. I'm pleased that everybody has, um, some people have uh, started making left-handed, more things for left-handed people now. A mug, yeah, it's good, Kat! <laughs> I didn't need a, a talk back to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> So the notch in the middle just helps me centre it. You don't have to cut a notch out, but if you do, make sure you don't go over the seam allowance, of okay. course. And then just pin it in place. You could just, if you didn't want to put a notch in, you can just mark it with a pin or get your fabric pen. Now I'm pinning it in the round because it's going to sit round your neck. So I just like to... Hang on. Oh! Happy New Year, Lorraine! Um, Auntie Lucy here, oh. anyone for Bucks Fizz? Oh, oh yes, please. Dear. Um, well, I I'll have a schlur, please. <laughs> Kat was saying she was bringing me in schlur today, but then she said that she, um, she didn't want me just sitting here for five hours on, whilst we've got guests all day, just necking back the <laughs> schlur. <laughs> so I didn't, didn't think it would be very fair to Mark and, and Catherine. No, I don't drink much. Very rarely. Tea? Yeah. Mm. Although I do like a Disserano. Someone bought Disserano. me, I do like Disserano, that's the exception. Uh, and Cezanne Lemonade, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, someone bought me, for my sister for Christmas, a, um, it's a liqueur, a creme liqueur Disserano. Ooh. Which Clive can highly recommend in Horlicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds nice. I've had Horlicks for years. It's a very middle class thing to do, isn't it? A holix. That pin is as blunt as anything. It wouldn't go through the fabric. <laughs> I couldn't get it in. So we're just pinning this. And the important thing is to make sure that you've got an, the finishes at even point either side. So I usually sort of measure this. You're winging it today. I might have to, just for just for the speed of what I'm doing. But get your little your little tape measure or okay. whatever or whatever you've got. And, and just measure, oh, I'll just stab myself. Are you putting it in your mouth then? Be careful, mm. once you've just <laughs> prodded yourself with your pin, are you okay? As long as no one comes and slaps me on the back while I'm... What? <laughs> Was that Elliot giggling? Yeah. <laughs> uh, slaps me on the back while I've got pins in my mouth. Don't put pins in your mouth. No. No, don't Bad put habits. pins in your mouth, yes. So pin this in carefully. 
This check would look lovely in the short sleeve option as well, wouldn't it, actually? Yes, yeah. Uh, and if you're not confident with doing plackets, then you can just do the short sleeve option. Although the placket, which I will show you the placket, is actually a nice, easy version. And plackets, there are quite a lot of different versions that you can do of plackets. Okay. Um, this is a nice one. So if you're not so confident doing the full version that you get on a formal shirt, this has a nice alternative. Um, still has a register slightly on the fiddly scale, but nowhere near as complex as, right. as the full one. So there we are. So that's in. So what we want to make sure, if I bring those ends around so they're in shot. Thank you, that's perfect. Is that that distance there mm -hmm. is the same on both. Right. Because that will form these bits. Of oh, so it's definitely worth measuring just to check because yes. you don't want a one. Yeah, so it's going to form key. these parts of, of, of your shirt here. There we go. Perfect. So I'm eyeballing it today just for speed. And so I think that looks about right. The other thing we need to make sure that we do on this side is that we have a little flap that can be sewn down. So we don't want to sew all of this fabric in place. So this does mark it on the pattern, but I prefer to do it this way to make sure that we're snipping at these shoulder seams just through the top layer of the fabric and no more than your one and a half centimetres. I'm just going to line it up with the seam. It'd be nice to make the gent in your life something. I know a lot of ladies who, who message in and, and say, oh, they want to make um, men's garments. So it's perfect, isn't it? I think this is only, this, like you say, the second one we've done, isn't it? Yeah, and this has a bit of a, although it's a summer shirt, it has a bit of a pyjama shirt kind of feel to it. Yeah. And they're quite, and you might think pyjamas, I'm thinking, because people wear pyjama shirts, it's quite fashionable now. Yeah. If you go to the really posh shirt makers like Bud in London, then yeah. you can buy pyjama shirts to wear as a shirt shirt throughout yeah. the day. So. Oh, nice. And I bet they're a fortune, aren't they? Yes, probably about three, four hundred pounds. Oh my word. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm going to nail it on. Now I like to work from the centre out. Are you switched on? We all on. I hope so. It's glowing. It's glowing at me. This is the Juki. By the way, these are the last few chances on the Juki machine. Um, I know it's considered maybe you're just thinking, right, 2021, I'm going to take the plunge and do it. Take my sewing to the next level. And it does make such a difference, doesn't it? Both you and oh, Clive work on this machine, yeah, yeah. don't we're, you? Duke, we've both got um, different Jukies. I can't remember the number of Clive's off the top of my head. His is a, a, a semi-industrial one, so right. just as a straight stitch. Um, but it just goes through concrete. Yeah. It's that, no, don't put concrete through it. <laughs> Elliot's saying, isn't it called Hazel? I call mine Hazel because it's... <laughs> It's an NX7HZL, so it's hazel. Oh. Now, I'm only sewing through at this point the under collar and the main body of the shirt. This is so that I leave this little, this little piece here. Mm -hmm. can, oh yes, you can see what I'm sewing. I need to snip that just a tiny bit more. Oh, those are the left-handed scissors. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody who's used the, uh, who, who's used to doing dressmaking for themselves, for, 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 for women, do you find that actually it's slightly easier, it would they'd still be able to pick up a dressmaking pattern for a man and be able to conquer it? Um, I suppose there's no dark sister mark, is it something that's... There's no, darts on, there's no darts on this shirt, so there's no reason why this couldn't be worn by both. Oh, right, yeah. A, a man and, and a woman. But yeah, you do get more structured fitting on a lot of ladies' garments. So for somebody who is familiar with dressmaking but hasn't made anything for a gent before, then this is going to be an easy sort of transition into... No, no bust adjustments. Yeah, That's there what you I'm... go. I realise I haven't got a, reg a normal foot on this. I was thinking, what's that on the side? But Oh, Pauline said I used to make shirts for buds. Oh, did she? Oh, wow, how much were they? Pauline, that's a very exciting. I've got a friend who works... Well, do you know, you, you follow someone, and you know, and he, this chap happens to work for Bud, so I follow him because he makes cracking shirts. Yeah. And uh, it's cut at Bud on, on various... This Instagram. is on Facebook or social media. This you don't on, just follow oh, him. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, on social media I follow them. Um, but then we were... When I went back for the final, to, and we had to meet in a, in a, local, uh, a local restaurant, yeah. and I thought... 
that's that guy from <gasps> Bud. I'm going gonna, gonna to say hello. So yeah. I did. And then I realised he was there. He was also meeting because he was um, Matt from the Sewing Bees' oh, friend. really? Yeah, what a small world. Gosh, so I that follow is a you small on social world. media. That is a small world. Now, the, the Juki has this lovely, lovely space under here. Yeah, and putting your extension table. Do you keep your extension table on? Usually. I only remove it if I actually have a, have a need to remove it. So, yeah, I've got an extra thing on my foot. I'm going to find the, the proper foot for when I'm back on at 11. <laughs> Pauline, that's hilarious. Um, unfortunately, you don't get 2,795 for free as well as the Juki because it says on the graphic there. Uh, sewing machine with free 2,795 pounds. <laughs> I think it's supposed to say with free machine feet, this are worth £150 poorly. We will change that. Or quickly put it in your basket. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be naughty, Mark. Don't be naughty. But they won't ask me back. Don't, don't um, encourage people, Mark. No. <laughs> they say, Mark said I'll get £3,000 for free. Yeah. No, you won't. No, you don't, you don't. No. What size did the pattern go up to? We've had a question come in. 52 inch chest, 48 inch it's waist, quite, and 53 inch It's got inch a very head. large finish as well. Okay. So uh, I'm about a 46 chest. Yeah. I cut out a 42, but it's still, oh, yeah. it's still very yeah. large on me. So um, check it. Maybe yeah. do a muslin or check the pattern pieces to your body before you cut it out you may need to go down a size if you don't want it to be Perfect. too, too yeah. big we've got osnaberg on the website if you want to um have go or calico or on the web um yeah pauline said the cheapest was roughly 150 pounds yes. she says they're made in andover in hampshire how, ex how that's really cool um also yes sue i'll find out because we do need to get some more of that waffle fabric i still love my dressing gown i love it She's just asked about getting some fabric in. We've had loads of messages. Hi, Derek. Happy New Year to everybody at Sewing Street. Good to see men's patterns on Sewing Street. I'm watching carefully. Um, make a shirt is my aim for 2021. There you go. Brilliant. Grab yourself the pattern. Um, it's only 9 99 for the pattern as well. Hang on. I've got the wrong foot on the machine. What foot have you got on there? Oh, it's it's uh, an edging foot and it's catching slightly. I've just got it caught up. I might need to have a regular foot on it. Do you need some help? Do you need um, us to grab you another foot? Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. mind the, I didn't notice when I was popping it together. But anyway, no, that's fine. No, we'll, we'll, we'll that. while someone gets me a regular foot. So this is what you get. So it's sewn down, top stitched there. Yeah. But here, Oh, lovely, thank you very much. I'll choose one from there. You've got this flap, and that is so that mm -hmm. when I spin it round, you can pop your seams up, fold that down, and top stitch it. Oh, okay, so that's a really lovely, neat finish. Yes, you don't have to do it that way. There are other ways you can do it. If you buy these kind of shirts in the shops, you might find they've got a piece of bias binding along the back of the neck or mm -hmm. a piece of ribbon or something if you mm -hmm. didn't want to do that. Okay. Or you could just overlock the edge of your collar and the neck of your shirt and leave, leave it, it, as it and leave it like that. There are other ways of doing those collars as well. Um, and the rest of it will be hidden by the facing. Ah, oh, perfect. So... Oh, that's, that's yeah, look at you, the, let's look at the Yeah, whilst you're changing your foot over, uh, just a quick recap, reminder, the pattern on its own, flying out already, it's just 9 99 It's one of the first men's pet patterns that we've been able to bring you since launching Sewing Street last February. So, of course, it's very, very popular indeed. Maybe it is also, like Derek, your New Year's resolution to make yourself or a, a gent in your life a shirt, everyday shirt, it's going to look different in, it's a real wardrobe buster actually because I'm thinking, you know, you could use this with so many different fabrics and it would look completely different so it's a real wardrobe staple filler, you could make this shirt time and time and time again and it would look completely different really smart in the poplin that uh, Mark's wearing imagine like this though uh, short sleeve summer shirt, it would look amazing £9.99 um, absolutely make the most of it all of the uh the the guy the, the size guides are on the back but it is very generous indeed if you've got it in your basket 
Be aware, it is very busy this morning. I think a lot of people are just maybe waking up with us. Happy New Year, if you did have a little lie in this morning. Did anybody see the New Year in? Mark didn't, I didn't, Kat and Elliot didn't, Catherine didn't. Everybody was um, fast asleep by nine o'clock. We needed to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Exactly, for, didn't we? exactly. Okay, so let's move on. You're all so, yes, sorted. Yes, back on now, got a proper foot on it. Perfect. Uh, so these are the facings. This is the bit that makes the collar right. uh, on, on, the, on the front. So what we need to do first is to just fold in this edge and press it down. If you didn't want to do this, you could just overlock this edge. But this is going to be the edge that sits inside the shirt. Okay. So you don't want to have a, a raw edge hiding. You could fold this over twice if you wanted. Um, just for today, I'm just going to fold it over once. I press it into place first. If you're using the linen, you might want to get a, a heavier iron or a steam iron onto it. And I'm just going to run this through the machine just to hold this down. See, this is one of those sections you could put in a different colour fabric if you wanted. Oh, nice, yeah. So, so that would look Yeah, that would look really nice. nice. Davis says, Happy New Year, Sewing Street. Love watching Mark. Ah. Lots of celebration, emojis. Oh, Clive saw the new year in. He said, I did. He said, Neighbours at Fireworks actually woke Mark up. Yeah, well, they we did. woke up to Fireworks this morning. They well, did. This morning, then I woke night. up again at three. It's exciting, isn't it, when you've got to get up early to go on the telly? I know. I, I don't sleep as... No. Do you? you no, must, I'm the same. And I'm here, uh, obviously... You're here all the time. A lot. <laughs> and yet still, I'm like, oh, no. It, we were talking about it yesterday, weren't we, Elliot? I, there's a word for it, you said, when... The anticipation of knowing that you can't, you're not going to sleep because you need to get up mm. is making you not sleep. Oh, it's a bit. We've got a message coming from Jean as well. Happy New Year, Jean. Jean says, create new, um, creative new year to you all. Yes, I oh. love that. Creative new year. Um, this is my year to give foundation paper piecing a go. Watch the next hour. She says, please don't sell out before I can order it. It's on pre-order, Jean. Um, but Yes, definitely stay tuned because in half an hour we will be um, looking at the, the quilt that's behind Mark and it's foundation paper piecing. I think that's going to be a lot of people's New Year's resolutions this year. Give it a go, tackle it. There we go. Oh, I didn't catch the top bit. Well, that's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> Telly so in. I can't see it from here. No, <laughs> no one can tell. Oh. Oh, he's cruel, isn't he? He's like, right, let me just zoom in. Let me zoom in. Who's zooming in? Elliot. Oh. <laughs> it's because you told him that you, they were getting someone better than him to come in and do the do you know, whenever we got an unpicker out on sewing bin, then you can guarantee there'll be a camera in oh. your face within about three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> and, a, and a lovely researcher going, Mark, tell me what's gone wrong. And we go, nothing. <laughs> Nothing's gone wrong. <laughs> oh. Telly, eh? We're cruel, aren't we? Um, Sue said, stood outside on the street chatting across the road to the neighbours in the snow and ice till 1am watching oh, the fireworks. Blimey, I wouldn't watch oh. them outside. It's very cold, isn't it? It's very cold. Message from Beverly as well. Happy New Year, Sue. So. Uh, Happy New Year, Vicky and all at Sewing Street. Uh, we saw the New Year in Zooming with our son in Detroit in the USA. Oh, amazing. Oh, that's lovely. I think a lot of people were having Zoom parties. In fact, Joe and Liam, if you're watching, uh, where was the invite? They played bingo last night without us. We didn't get the invite. Marjorie, hello. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody. Great show as normal. Um, and the song goes, things can only get better. Yeah, maybe we should do like a soundtrack to, you know, the year. Like, I'm still standing can go on there as well. The Labour Party played that when they, when they won in 1997. <laughs> Did they? There's a nice clip of uh, John Prescott and all that lot dan dancing away. No while, way. While that was played live. At their big rally. Anyway, should we press on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let us know what other songs we can have on our album. There's Maybe a very funny clip show. from BBC News. I saw it just before I came on from Simon McCoy. He's a, he's a, he's a devil, he really is. Yeah. Saying they've put together a special film with the best parts of 2020. He looks away, just comes back and says, yes, that was it. 
Oh. And, that, and there was no film. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> oh, we had good parts, didn't we? We had good parts. I must say, if... Uh, and it's like... Uh, yeah, it's a bit of yeah, a blip well, year. Yeah, but there are positives. Yeah, there so are positives. So B went out. Although That's I it. it last I mean, year. you kept us company, and uh, you know, right through the thick of it in April when it yeah. first began. Twenty second of April was the first episode, wasn't it? Mm. I, I don't my remember that birthday. off the uh, top of my head. Mark did say it earlier. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here we are. So the shirts in, the collars on. Yeah. And the facings prepared. So I've sewn along there. Okay. And at the top as well. What we're going to do is right sides together, you pin it in place and it should match up with the shoulder seam. So it's important to get it, where's the pair pinned on? It should match up. It, <laughs> should, it should go okay. up to the shoulder seam right. if it's all been put in properly and cut squarely. It's not a biggie if it doesn't because it's inside. Yeah. Oh, it's so lovely to have your interaction today. We've had loads of messages. Hi, Linda. Linda's messaged in saying, New Year. Um, I was up to see the New Year in. I was too excited. I just became a great grandma. Amazing oh, with a little Lord. girl called Harper. £6.12 as well. She said, All's well. Happy New Year. How exciting is that? Oh, my word. Congratulations. Great grand. Big enough to eat. Oh, a £6.11. <laughs> That's a good size, isn't it? I was more than that. I was. I was a ten pound baby. No. Yeah, I was ten pounds. You wouldn't think to look at you now. Oh my word! I, think I was. You've got a ten pound baby in you already. Oh no. <laughs> I am growing rapidly, and I'm like, oh no, oh no, oh no. Please. My mother didn't have to have a big cutout in the bench for you to stick your bum. Yeah, in. yeah. We'll do soon. <laughs> right. So I've pinned that in place. Oh, you naughty machine. Oh, what are you doing, Mark? It's, it's unthreaded itself. It's unthreaded itself. I had a message from Leslie as well. Hi, Leslie. Leslie said, my New Year's resolution is to try Sashko and buy more fabric, but don't tell my husband. Sashko? <gasps> Sashko, yes. What's that? Oh, it's a Japanese hand-stitch uh, hand technique. Oh, In wow. fact, um, it's there behind me. Oh, this one. That's Sashko. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? It's really lovely. Very addictive. Very addictive. So we're going to sew all the way down the front with the motorway sewing. Do you have any New Year's resolutions, Mark? Well, I don't know whether you should have to wait to New Year to make them. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, good idea. Not really. I haven't thought about it too hard yet. No, I think this year just, I'm not, yeah. I just, just happy, want to get through it. <laughs> I'm just happy it's not 2020 anymore. Oh no, he's watching, isn't he? <laughs> Who? John Scott. Is he? Hasn't he got things to do? Happy New Year, my lovely John Scott. We love you. He says, morning, Vix and Mark. Happy New Year. Did you stay up, John? Did you see the New Year in? Saw you had a bottle of fizz, non-alcoholic, but you did have a bottle of fizz. So, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe you did see the New Year in then. He had, he had a wild his... one compared to us. Has he had his breakfast brought to him yet? <laughs> oh, you know something I don't. Um, <laughs> uh, Clive said, Gloria Gaynor, I'll survive. Yeah, that can go on our, our album as well. We're trying to discuss songs for this year. Me and Mark want to do a positive. I'm still standing. Things can only get better. I Will Survive is on the album. Absolutely. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> Cat is very loud, by the way, in 2021. She's very loud this year. No talk back required. No. Can you hear her? What yeah, are you can... stitching? What are you <laughs> sewing now, sorry? <laughs> I'm we just digress. Away. I've sewn all the way down the front of the shirt. Yeah. Now I'm going to go around the collar. So I'd, I've done it in two sections, but you can just go round it. And try and go over the stitching that you've already sewn to put the collar in place. So take your time around this bit. Don't sew over your pins. I'm being very good and removing them so Clive doesn't message in and tell me off. <laughs> John's already taken his outside tree down. Is that the one that Hugh Grant gave you, John? <laughs> um, <laughs> we were talking about you name dropping and I said, you just randomly, John was talking to me on a voice note. We often like exchange messages on our phone and we talk about Christmas decorations. He says, well, I've got that one that Hugh Grant gave me. And I've got this. I'm like, do you realise what you just said? 
Uh, he says, I've put my, I've, I've taken my Christmas tree down this morning, the one that was outside, and he said, I can hear cat. Can hear you singing cat. What, on the telly? Yeah, I can hear <laughs> through my microphone. John, you've got it all to come tomorrow. She's producing it, uh, John, tomorrow. Oh, my word. She's very loud in 2021. OK. <laughs> so, here we go. Uh, there we go, the facing's in place. OK. So what we have now is a sandwich. So you've got the outside of the shirt, you've got yep. the facing, and in between the two mm -hmm. is the collar. We're going to snip the corner off. I love when he says, no, it was from Tom Cruise. <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> oh, the Tom, you got the wrong Tom. Oh, right. Can't keep up. Poke the little corner friends. out. I give it a press. Okay. And there's your collar. Oh, nice. Do the same on the other side. Uh, give it, it needs a press and a bit, a bit more trimming of the seams. Okay. And that's your collar done. Do the same on the other side. And the reason we left a little notch, I haven't got, quite got mine in the right place, but is that you turn it up like that and push the seams inside. And you can either slip stitch those down or you can yeah. just run it through the machine. Right. It won't really be seen because it's at the back of the neck. Yeah. And that's how you do your collar. Oh. There are other ways to do it as well, um, all along the same kind of lines, but there are different variations on how you can do yeah. it. So if, you, if you've got a favourite method, you might do that, or you can just do a bit of Googling. Right. If you wish to do, other search engines are available. <laughs> Ask Jeeves, Bing, <laughs> Java. <laughs> There we go. Amazing. So that's yes. the collar done. That's um, the collar done. We always wanted to show the cuffs. Yes. Do so we, let's have yeah, a quick look at the cuffs. So the pattern actually wants one piece cut out for the cuffs. Now okay. I've changed it because I wanted to do something else. Now, I've done one of these already. So it's a, a continuous looped uh, facing. Okay. So this is the facing that I've done already. Lovely. So what you have is a strip of the spot. Well, I've done it in the opposite You're fabric. You've done the contrast. It's good uh, to be able to show it on telly, but it also shows, yeah, grab something from your stash if you want. Absolutely. Have um, a nice, uh, Oh, there it is. Accent. I thought I'd lost the piece. <laughs> there we go. So that's all the continuous loop is, just a strip of fabric, which you sew on one side, turn around and press into place. So you could use a piece of vice binding okay. if you wish to this, or any fabric or a matching one. You can iron it down flat. You can leave it so you've got the loop out if you wanted to do that you've got lots of different options and it's a much easier way of putting one on than it is uh, on a regular one okay again uh, like colors there's an awful lot of ways you can put a, a different types of facings you can put into place mm -hmm. um, this is probably the nicest i think so i just need to find my does it come with a pattern piece then for the yes it's facing. little yeah that That's has a little <laughs> yeah it's crazy yes. it does have a pattern piece I'll get um, in there. Here we go. So make sure you get two, a right and a left. Mm -hmm. Don't make two rights or two lefts. Well, they, they are different, aren't they? They, they? It is actually, I think, well, obviously, your elbow, the space for your elbows, even though it's a loose fitting sleeve, there yes. is a right sleeve and a left sleeve, and there's a front and a back to your sleeve. Absolutely. And also on the plackets as well, because you don't want to have ah. a placket at the front and on one side and on the back on the other. Yeah. So make sure you get it into the right place. So there's just a simple V to cut. Now, uh, is that a pen? That's a textile marker. Is that one that disappears? It's a belt tip, no. Um, would you like a chalk pencil? Yes, that will do. Or is this one that's... This is our early bird Is this special? the early bird? Yeah, early bird <laughs> special. Three pounds saving on your chalk pencils today. Well, that's quite good, isn't it? I like that. You can just about see it on the white. So mark the edge of the V. And then mark the point as well. CJ, message the studio, studio at sewingstreet.com. Email them and we'll forward it on to Hayley. Uh, we'll find out why you haven't had your, your code because, yeah, you should have your code from today. Anybody else who's having trouble finding their code, if it's not on your account or in an email, please do message in, studio at sewingstreet.com because, yes, you can start using your free P and P today, which is really exciting. If you were involved in the Twelve Days of Christmas event, and why wouldn't you? 
Yeah, absolutely. Make the most of it. Uh, Linda said, good morning from a very frosty Evesham. Uh, she said, happy new year. We bought in the new year with some blue champagne. Blue champagne in a hot tub with, uh, with our neighbours. Amazing. Is it January um, still? Uh, that sounds gorgeous though, doesn't it? A hot tub in the cold is really nice. Uh, today will be mostly consist of quilting. Uh, start as you mean to go on. Lovely. A happy creative year. Or creative new year, we're calling it. Hi, Ola. Oh, it won't let you show it. Can't read it out, read it out. Oh, here it is. Happy New Year 2021. Um, everyone got married on the 30th of December, just before another lockdown. Uh, we did a live broadcast. Who got married? I got married. You got married on the 30th of December, just before another lockdown. We did a live broadcast on Facebook for our family in Poland. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations. Well, they got married in Poland, all the families in Poland. Families in Poland got married here just before the lockdown oh. on the 30th and did it all as a live stream. That sounds so nice. I've still got weddings on my books, which I've had taken deposits for, because yeah. um, I pay the piano for yeah. weddings as well and other there things. There you go. Yeah. If you want to book me, yeah. you can. Yeah, because as a duo, we should yeah, come as a duo and do, do that, a package. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they keep moving it on and on and on. Oh, I know. It's so yeah, it's so sad. Some people have had to move their wedding like three or four times, haven't they? And anyway, back to the sewing. Yeah. So what you do here, you see, you follow the V okay. on the pattern. You sew. Mine aren't very straight for some reason. Probably because I'm stood up. But make them straighter than mine, please. Uh, you sew down to the point. Go across one stitch and then back down again. Right. And then you'll carefully cut in between the two, like that, and spread it out. Now, with the right side of the uh, of of the placket to the wrong side of the shirt, pin it in place. Actually, which side am I going to start sewing? I'm going to start sewing this side. Because what we need one to do is sew over the stitching you've just done. That's mm -hmm. your guide. You are sewing very close to the edge. On the edge of... No, I won't say that. On the, there's, a, there's a Lady Gaga song, isn't there? <laughs> I'm on the edge. No, that can't go on our album. No. So the way I do it is I just pin one half and then I do the other half as I go along but you might want to pin it all the way along so let's get your needle in yours is a really quick locking stitch doesn't it your machine yes I do like the locking stitch although sometimes if I want it to be really strong yeah like if you're doing some uh, welt pockets mm -hmm. I don't use the locking stitch I'll do a back stitch right. on those because I sometimes find it's just a, a little bit stronger if it's if it's something that's particularly uh, gonna get a lot of use uh -huh. Or you could do both. And then you're going to carefully stitch along that same line of stitching. Now, you're virtually stitching into nothing. Okay. So you do have to take it carefully. And you want to try and avoid any pucker at the, at the, at the point at all. It isn't always possible, and it does come with practice. But the thing is, the pucker's in a decent place anyway, so you could just say, it's part of the design I meant oh, to Oh yeah, I love I meant a good design it feature. Yeah, design mm -hmm. feature. So I'm about in the middle now, so I'm going to swing it round. Keeping your, uh, keeping your needle in. Keeping the needle in. And again, continuing to follow the row stitching you did before. And with a bit of luck, there are lots of other ways to do plackets. If you didn't want to do this, or it's not, we just don't like the, the look of it. There's a great YouTube channel from Angela Kane, okay. K A N E. She did. She's done a lot of work on looking at different types of cuff plackets because it can be a tricky thing. And she's got a, a free downloadable pattern, not for this type, but for yeah. a different type of placket and a really good two-part video on how to do it. That's, That's good the, to know. Which is the one I, I like to do. Ah, good tip, good if tip. If I'm doing a, like a, a full shirt. Let's we'll take the pin out. So this is what you end up with. Let's just flip it round. 
We'll give that a press. Keep the seams facing towards the placket. I've got more requests for our album. Is it Calla? <laughs> <laughs> the only way's up. The only way is up. Yeah. Does, does Sewing Street have its own record label? Uh, we should make it a thing, really, shouldn't we? With John Scott's contacts, surely we could make it a thing. Inspirational music for sewing. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> for the creative new year. Um, and Elizabeth. Elizabeth sent a message in. Vicky, the song, The Sewing Machine... The Sewing Machine, is that a song? I don't the know. The Sewing Machine should be an anthem for Sewing Street, especially after 2020. Great show. Uh, you and Mark, what a team. Thank you very much. We'll have to look that one up, I think. It's the Sewing Machine, how do we not know this song? <laughs> right, we're looking it up, we're going to look it up. Does anybody else know it? Message on the Facebook if you know it. Um, don't Stop Me Now by Queen, Tracy said. That's a good one. Yeah, don't stop me now. We need to make these all quite um, acoustic-y though, because one voice and a piano. We've got good. Andy on his, on his guitar. Yeah, Andy your, on guitar, your, your, your absolutely. Um, Elliot plays the drums. Oh, no, don't, don't encourage Elliot, no. No. We don't, we don't Kat said, I could be there, I could, I could be there. We should have Debbie Shaw on the maracas. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, I'm not showing what I'm doing. That's terribly rude. Sorry. That's all right. We're, we're, we're... I know, rabbiting in. There we go. So this is what you get. Okay. So I've just pressed a half centimetre seam uh, uh, fold, fold there. Fold down, yeah. And you fold it over, covering your row of stitching, and you go whoosh, along there. So we'll do that now. What's Gosh, we're going to have to do a, a couple of albums, aren't we? Margaret said, don't worry, be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. I like that one. Good idea, good idea. And you're going to stitch as close to the edge in your best top stitching that you possibly can. If you struggle with top stitching, just match your thread and it doesn't stand out as much, does it? Absolutely. I mean, I'm using a, a white thread because that was the nearest one. And you're very good. You well, are very neat. You could you could um, slip stitch this in place, but you want it to be quite strong. So I'd probably be a bit wary of that. Now you want to try to avoid when you get to the centre, mm -hmm. lift your foot up, just whiz the fabric round. Right, reposition. And off you go. I think mine might have just shifted slightly, but Oh, Eileen, thank you for your message. She said, um, here we go. Happy New Year. This was the bit of the shirt making that always had me flummoxed. Took me years to get it. You've demonstrated it so clearly. Oh, that's nice to hear. There we go. That's there not actually too bad. There we go, in between the bad. chat, in between our chatting. For a rush job, that's pretty good. So that's what you get. And like I said, you can leave that middle bit out like that. You could press it in the correct Ooh. direction. Yeah. If you want to so it disappears. It doesn't have to be a contrast. I quite like it to be a contrast. Nice. So you can have it as a, a as a feature, or you could have it. What have you done on yours? I've left it sticking out. Yeah. Although it's sat in at the moment, but yeah, you could do it whichever you prefer. Yeah. Whichever yeah, you prefer, it. and you can make it wider if you wish as well. It doesn't okay. have to be that. That's quite a thin one. I have yeah. done the same technique, which is much wider, chosen a much like double the thickness yeah. of the fabric, so you have a nice, a nice Ooh, big, bigger that'd one. Oh, that look nice. Especially if you're using quite a plain shirt, and then you use like some nice liberty or something that's going to really yes. stand out. Exactly. That'd be amazing. So when you've got the pattern, the pattern's only nine ninety nine. Uh, if you're careful with it, you'll be able to use it again and again. I think this would be a great sort of wardrobe builder, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And you can copy it out onto something stiffer if you like, like a bit of manila card. Yeah. If you wanted to, just to keep it going Good for idea. longer. Good idea. It's brand new today and very, very popular. We've literally got a couple of minutes. I won't sew anything, do... but I'll just show you, talk you through what you're doing Thank with you. the cuff. Now, I've cut the cuff piece in half added a seam allowance onto each side and okay. sewn two different fabrics together. That's how right. I've achieved that. So you end up with one piece of fabric that's the same size as the original pattern piece. Now I do it differently to the instructions. The instructions will have you sew it on the outside and then fold it round and then top stitch it in place. But then you've got to try and 
make sure that the underside, what you can't see, was is on the inside. That is, right. it's not very good. I prefer to do it the other way. Right. What's your way then? You would normally have the sleeve on the shirt by yep. now, of course. So you'll start off with it on the inside. You'll then stitch that into place. Let's get this the right way around. It feels weird when it's not actually on a on on a shirt. So you'll have. That'll all be stitched up. Yeah, so you stitch it to the inside first. Right sides together. There are pleats to put in this as well, so don't forget to put your pleats in there marked on the pattern. Yeah, so you pop the cuff on the inside, sew around there, and then you fold it out and round. And then what you're doing, because you'll have pressed in a, a crease there, uh -huh. you've just got to top stitch along that seam oh, there. Oh, that seems less complex. And then you're top stitching on the outside, so it doesn't matter about catching anything underneath because you've already sewn that piece down. Just like doing a piece of bias binding, you'd always put the bias binding on the inside first, then the flip it around and top stitch yeah. it down. It's exactly the same method. There are other ways to do cuffs as well. You can sew the whole cuff up like a like a standard shirt collar yeah. and apply it that way as well. Right, okay. Oh, nice. Lots of tips. Very handy indeed. Thank you ever so much. Pleasure. Thank you ever so much. Oh, the coat that you're making in the next day Beautiful, is my favourite. I love it. I absolutely love it. I've already, I say, I've already, um, I've already nabbed it. I love it. <laughs> there you go, look. Mark modelling earlier on. Oh, you took put it on as well. Well, oh, that's yeah. without. That's just as a casual. Oh, there's Mark. Who wore it better? <laughs> that's gorgeous. That is really nice. Let us know who wore it better, but I think it's Vix wore it better. Oh no, you look amazing. <laughs> look at it. And the mannequin, the mannequin looks great too. Um, thank you ever so much. Look forward to uh, seeing you in the, in the next hour. Oh, Kerry has said it's Bet uh, Betty Hutton, the sewing machine song. Um, a golden oldie. Oh, and Carol said it was from our Annie Get Your Gun. How did I not know that? Annie Get Your Gun? Yeah. We're thespians, aren't like, we? We should know that. We you should speak know for that. Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's 1947, the sewing machine song. Oh, thanks, Collage, said Vix wore it better. Uh, right, okay, let's have a look at the pattern. Those of you that have not yet got it, remember, check out now. It's one of the first men's shirt patterns that we've offered on Sewing Street. Maybe it's your New Year's resolution to make something for a gent in your life or make something for yourself. I know Derek messaged in saying, 2021 is the year I'm going to do the shirt. So grab it whilst you can. Um, you've got different options. Option one, uh, A, is your long sleeve, which is again, like you say, that sort of pajama style um, shirt, isn't it? It's lovely and loose fitting, great sleeves, lovely techniques that we've seen with Mark today as well. Whether you're doing it with a pocket or without a pocket, up to you. Uh, you've also got the short sleeve option which is lovely for spring and summer, especially with some of the fabrics that we've had today. Uh, all of your sizes are on at the top of the packet. Elliot is about to show you. Um, it's a nice loose fitting though as well. So of course, um, Mark was saying it's actually very generous indeed. So even though it says it's up to 52 inch chest, um, it, it's still very nice and loose fitting. So that's your simplicity. <laughs> simplicity is not simple for me to say, is it? Simplicity pattern, very popular indeed. Sharon says, great show. Mark is very informative. I agree. Now the fabric that he's wearing today, which looks amazing. Sorry if it slightly strobes your screen, by the way. I think. Um, yeah, I think it's just slightly, we did th wonder this this morning. So it, it isn't in real life at all strobey. <laughs> just when Mark's doing his dancing, yeah, slightly strobey. It's only on a um, certain, what, sorry, Elliot. It's only on certain monitors, only on certain televisions will it strobe. Some people have said it's fine. Um, 26 pounds and 99 pence for three and a half meters, which is plenty enough to be able to make the largest size with the long sleeves. So if you decide to do a smaller size for short sleeves, you'll have plenty left over. Um, and then the swallows, did you say, or the green? The green check, which is a printed gingham. Um, this is the one that Mark's been working with, which is great for spring. Really lovely. It's only 26.99 again for three and a half meters. There are other bundles available on the website. We've got the swallows ones and we've got the linens all available on the web. Definitely have a look. Right, so who was it that messaged in saying their New Year's resolution was to tackle FPP? If you too are thinking, right, this is the year, come on, we can do it together. Catherine is an amazing teacher, as we all know, so let's conquer it together. Foundation paper piecing in the most gorgeous quilt. Great kits coming up right after this.
to see me back. <laughs> My baby piece of kiss with the sewing is the same with that. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! We'd like to say a massive thank you to all of you for supporting Sewing Street since we began this year. 2020 has been a tough year for everyone, so we are very proud of how far we have come. And we couldn't have done it without you. From starting in February for an hour a day, building up to being live for five hours, as well as launching Yarn Lane. We hope you've had as much fun watching us as we've had bringing you tutorials from our expert guests. And a little bit of entertainment along the way. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year from all at Sewing Street and all the best for 2021. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. New Year's are always about trying new things, so why not try out a new hobby? From the 4th to the 10th of January, Sewing Street will be bringing you a week packed with demonstrations on new techniques, beginner's tutorials and brand new projects. With everything from ribbon art, making your own sleepwear, new quilting techniques and beginner's homeware makes. We have something for everyone. Sign up to our email newsletter and follow us on social media to find out what's on when. And watch our New Year new hobby shows from 8am to 1pm on Monday the 4th to Sunday the 10th of January on Freeview 72, Sky 670, our YouTube channel or Facebook Live. Welcome back. I'll tell you what, it's 10 o'clock already. I don't know where. This year is flying by, isn't it? <laughs> this year is flying by. Um, we've got an amazing show. It's just lovely to be able to ease ourselves in to the new year. Lots of creative ideas, lots of inspiration. Now, right, so first hour with Catherine, we were doing a bit of, you know, mindless, lovely, slow stitch and mindful. <laughs> But also, you're not using too much of your brain power, is what I meant. Um, do you know what I mean? Mindful. Um, and you still don't need to actually think too much. You can sit and you can have a chat. Whereas this, we need our brain power. Um, we do need our brain power. This is one of the most incredible quilts, though. The end result is spectacular. Foundation paper piecing is something that I know daunts a lot of people, but it gives you such incredible precision, precision to be able to make this. Look at this quilt. We absolutely love, love, love this. Now, it's the first one that I have seen from Beth Studley. This is um, uh, from Love From Beth. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. It's foundation paper piece. It's one block, so it's easy to conquer. Um, and we put it together with our own kits. So you can see there, you want to be able to have lovely bright colours. It works so, so well. Um, what you need to be able to get that result is contrast. And that's what we've done in this bundle. This is going to be so dramatic. Now you have got five and a half meters, which is so much fabric. You've got more than enough to do the quilt. In fact, you've got enough to do two quilts if you want to, two quilt tops. There's so much there. Um, we put together 
more than enough so that you have plenty of variety. Um, and we haven't just chosen any fabrics in here. You've got designer fabrics in there. Bit of Tula I can see. Your Tula spot. Um, we've also got some of the wildflower woods in there. Is that the wildflower woods? I think that's Moda. Um, that's gorgeous. Um, this one's amazing as well. Tim Holtz, brand new to us. Lewis and Irene here as well. We've got some beautiful designer fabrics as well as your more textured model effects and some solids. So you get half a meter of each, half a meter of white, half a meter of your mottled orange, half a meter of your Lewis and Irene, half a meter of Tim Holtz, half a meter of black, half a meter of your silver, half a meter of Moda, half a meter of your, what is this the Wildflower Woods one? Yeah, this was Wildflower Woods. Um, half a metre of your gradient, half a metre of your grey and Tula Pink polka dot pom-poms fabric. Plus, you get your all-important pattern, which, I mean, you could make a quilt and some cushions to go with if you want. You could do a quilt and use the block for a wall hanging or, or you know, there's so much that you're going to be able to use this fabric for. And because they're quite small pieces, I would absolutely be diving into the Tula or the Moda for, for other projects as well. Um, Love from Beth, this pattern is. It's the first time I've seen a Love from Beth pattern and um, yeah, we absolutely love it. So, the finished size of the quilt is 54 by four, 44 by 54 inches. Um, it's saying intermediate, but I think, do you know what? If you've never done foundation paper piecing before, with Catherine's help today, with the pattern and with the tutorial, I think that you'll be able to conquer it. There's lots of people who are saying, right, 2021, I'm having a go. I'm doing it, foundation paper, paper piecing. It does change your sort of outlook then. There are so many patterns that I look at that go, I really want to do that. And then I realise it's foundation paper piecing and I go, oh, I can't do it. Whereas it will open up so many more possibilities when you get the hang of it. So, all of the questions, get them in. Uh, and we'll have a look with Catherine as well with this one, how the colours would sit and how it's going to work with this design because I know loads of you are loving this kit. Five and a half metres for £63.99, and pence, including your pattern. Now we've also got a second bundle. This Oh my word, is a biggie. You have got a huge amount of rainbow fabric. Seven and a half metres. Thank you, Catherine. Seven and a half metres of all of your coloured fabric, plus you're getting your pattern included as well. Um, how is this 58 49 Do you know what? Our prices of solid fabrics are amazing. Bearing in mind, it's 100% cotton. It's beautiful, beautiful quality. And look at all the different shades of pink, the gradients that you're going to be able to do. If you want to do a contrast, here's a bit of an idea of how the block is going to look as well in these colours. I love that. Absolutely love it. Cats think you're doing double-sided quilt. If you get really into it and you want to do both sides, it will take time. It isn't a quick project. Uh, you did get a look from Catherine then, Cat. yes. Um, so, she's, I know, New Year, she's being very, um, <laughs> just loud, Elliot say. She's a, uh, yeah, adventurous. Look at all this fabric that you get, seven and a half metres. Needless to say, you have more than enough to be able to do your quilt and have loads left for your stash. Whether you want to make two quilts, whether you want to have practice with other foundation paper piecing patterns that you have, remember you are also getting the pattern as well included. We love it, 58 pounds and 49 pence. So that's the option that we're gonna be uh, working with today. Now, as I say, the small pieces of fabric in there. We thought the combination of colours, you are going to need a variety of different fabrics. I do know though, lots of you at home have got an array of fabrics in your stash. So, would you like to have a go at the pattern on its own? The price is amazing. It will mean that this sells out very quickly. If you want the pattern on its own, check out now at £6.50. How good is that? Um, it's a Love From Beth pattern. It's your circus top quilt. It's so cool. I love these bright colours as well. But just having contrast, if you were to do it in monochrome, it's going to look completely different. £6.50. 
all of your instructions are in there, everything that you need to know, and plus, oh yeah, with your Libs Elliot from yesterday. I think, in fact, actually, I mentioned it with the Libs Elliot fabric. I thought straight away this is going to look amazing. So you have everything that you need in there. We'll talk about the templates and how they come into play. For anybody who's not done foundation paper piecing, don't be intimidated by the fact that it says intermediate. If you have done some quilting or patchwork before, if you are familiar with your, your machine, then with today's guidance, I think we can all conquer it. We're in single figures for the pattern on its own. Half the stock of the solid bundle has already gone. Lots of people have got the design of fabric in their basket as well. If you're waiting on checking out, we'll talk to Catherine in just a second about, you know, combinations and how this one is going to come together because I think it's going to be really interesting actually. So the pattern on its own is about to go. Grab that whilst you can. Um, the only thing that we didn't have in this hour, which we do have on the website, is your foundation paper piecing paper, which we think would be really useful, really useful. It's a, a lighter weight paper, so it's easy to sew through, easy to tear out as well. If you shorten your stitch, um, then you get that perforated edge, so it will basically just tear out nice and easily. Uh, and you can use that with majority of the inkjet printers that you have at home so it literally will just go through your, your printer um, so we would recommend that normally when we do foundation paper piecing shows I say sorry it's out of stock it's out of stock um, but we have got it make the most of it whilst it's on your screen you get how many sheets 100 sheets there you go 100 sheets for 14.99 Amazing. Uh, we'll talk about how it's useful though um, with Catherine. So, Catherine, welcome back. Um, I love this colourway as well, and we've asked you to have a bit of a play around with it because it's completely different to the um, to the to the other solid colours that you've put together. It is, but I think it would work really well because it would just be so dramatic. So I've separated oh, them out into the bright colours and the lighter colours and the darker colours. Now, whichever colourway you decide to do this quilt in, you want to choose one colour that you use for your central squares ah because okay. they're the little bits that joined up join up so if you look at the one behind me those little central squares and corners are all the same and her board around here is right. the same so you probably want to put one aside for that if it was me doing this i'd put the gray aside yeah and then the pattern is going to work best if you get the biggest contrast you can so i'd be putting my black with my orange and then the grey with the orange and yeah. just mixing them all up as much as possible. You want to, this wants to have a sort of organised randomness to it. The one behind me, if you look at it carefully, she's got no blocks the same. Do you find that They're difficult as a quilter? No, I love doing that, but some people, A lot of people are very Some people random. find it really hard. Um, you have to not think about it too much. You have to, the, the best way to start this is to get your fabric, cut up a lot of strips. They're seven inches by two inches. Okay. So if you cut yourself a whole pile of strips of each of the colors, lay them all out, yep. and then you can start to put them together in pairs. Right, okay. But that beautiful little rainbow stash you've got over there, you don't want to put the pinks together. You don't want to put the blues together. Right. It's not going to pop like it needs to on this pattern. You want your contrast. You want the contrast. So you want a light with a dark. So like on this, I put orange and pink together. You know, most people think, oh, orange and pink doesn't work. I love that But clash. it really works yeah. in this quilt. Yeah. So when you're doing this one, think with this colorway, think about how you're going to pop them together to oh, get yes. that real pop. I do love the oranges and the greys together. They're going to look really nice. I like those two. They're gorgeous, aren't they? And especially that you've got a bit of um, prints in there as well. It's nice well. to have a little print. If you're deciding to use your stash, yeah. small small prints are quite good. But even these these spots will be fine. They'll yeah. be nice. They'll come out nicely. So I great colourway. And you can really mix and match. They all go together. So it doesn't matter which way around you do it. They all go in some way or other, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Just so you know, the pattern on its own is about, it has sold out and the, the bundle with the solids is about to sell out. So be really quick for that one. We'll keep the uh, the graphics in for the monochrome and orange, just be aware. Oh, uh, Catherine yeah. will be working with the rainbow colourway. I have, because that's what I got sent to me. Okay, so you'll have cut yourself up lots and lots of little strips. Okay. Now you might find as you get through this process, you don't have to cut them quite as big. 
but you've got to be careful with foundation piecing that you don't cut it too small because then you have problems. Right, so, so this is a good out. basic um, size to do it. It's what she says at, at the start of her pattern. So seven Air inches by two portion. inches. You need to copy yourself a large quantity of the blocks. So how will the foundation <laughs> paper help with this do you um, think? It's a bit lighter weight this is just my normal printer copy of paper and it does work okay. but it's when you come to pull it out it's just a little bit thicker so if you can get the the foundation paper I would. Oh brilliant you, it's gone yeah. it's sold out well done everybody. Okay. If you just come to your left slightly yep. please just shimmy it all over that's there it. There we go. Perfect. Thank I can't, you. I can't hit the spot today can I? No you're absolutely <laughs> perfect that's lovely thank you. Okay so we're going to start this now I've got a very important tool in my box today I've got um a Christmas, Christmas card. card. There you go. <laughs> what you need to do first of all is you need to make some folds. When you do foundation paper piecing you will see that the block has got numbers on. You absolutely have to put it together in the order that it tells you. So number one is down here and then we're working around to number 11, number 12, number 13. So like colouring in by numbers with your fabric? It is, absolutely. So I'm going to use my Christmas card just to make a nice sharp fold along like that. And actually a Christmas <laughs> bit of card works really well. Perfect. So instead of putting it away, this is what I did. Your patchwork ruler is a bit too thick. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to fold two or three of them for starters. You don't want to fold them all at once else it'll be too concertinaed. Had you done much foundation paper piecing before? No, Catherine? I am relatively new to it actually. Oh, that's I haven't good. done a huge amount. But I really like doing it actually. You can get such great results. Yeah, it makes um, it really precise, doesn't it? It does. And quite you can do quite intricate things and it's just quite um a pleasing way of doing it as you see the pattern come out. Yeah. Once you've got your head round which way you're doing things. Could you use a jelly roll then, I suppose, if they're not going to be bigger than two inch, two and a half yeah. inch strips, are they? Yeah. I'm thinking with the barley pops, with your batiks, they look gorgeous. Absolutely. So what we're going to do first is our first line to sew is going to be the number one. We're going to fold that back. I'm going to take my first two strips. Is that the top line of number one or the one between? It is. It's the first diagonal I'm with one you. here, small yeah. diagonal. <clears throat> you've got an outside square and then you've got some dotted squares. Now the dotted squares, that's what you want to cut it out on because your solid line is your quarter inch seam line for when you come to join your blocks okay. together. Each block's got four of these in. You are going to be making a lot of them. But once you've done the first one and you've got the hang of it, yeah. um, you can speed it up, which I'll tell you how to do as we go on. So we're going to put our two together. Uh, if you're doing the solids like this, there isn't really a noticeable right side or wrong side. So it doesn't really matter, but it will be right sides together. Okay. You're going to pop your paper piece on so that you've got a quarter inch from your line. I'm going to fold that back and we're going to stitch along the solid line. We're going to do a little reverse at the beginning and the end and we're going to go just past the actual line. Okay. Okay. Are you going to pin it or anything like that? I'm not. I'm just going to go for it. I did do a little bit of reading up about this because it's always nice to see if people have any other tips. I did read the odd thing where people said you could use a dab of glue to hold things oh, in place. But pen. because these are quite small pieces, to be honest, you can, hold you can manage it with just holding So you're it. sewing with the paper on top and with your fabrics underneath. Yes, and I've just remembered I've got to make my stitch a little bit smaller. If you make your stitch a bit smaller, so I've put it down to 1.5 stitch length, it makes it easier to tear your paper off at the end, perforates it more. I'm going to pass it a little bit and reverse. If you've got a machine with scissors, this does help. You want to set yourself up for this. You want your machine, you want your cutting mat, you want your ironing board, you want them all on hand because you've got to go keep going between them all. Oh, well, mate, I know some people who like to purposely put their ironing board and their things all round because otherwise they won't get their steps in. Try well, that's true. You in. will get your steps in with this because after each piece, you've got to yeah. uh, <laughs> press it okay. and trim it. Okay, so I'm going to press that open. 
Do you find that after a foundation paper piece project, you need to change your machine needle? Going through the paper. Um, I probably would actually. Just because you'll have gone through a lot and it will start to have blunted it. Okay, so I haven't, the first one's always the trickiest one. It does your head in a bit. And you saw me just press it, but I've actually folded it back again. I'm then going to bend down where the number two line is. And I'm going to trim this down to a quarter of an inch. Right. And keep these bits that you cut off your first one because they will go on the other end at number 11 because they're two really small pieces. Oh. So less wastage. Yeah, like that. Okay, so I've trimmed that down. Then I'm going to open it out again because I don't want to stitch my number one in place. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep that folded down so I can see my quarter inch again. I'm going to take the next colour. It's going to go underneath like so. Then I'm going to fold it back and I'm going to stitch again. Now what you've got to watch with this is as we go round the square, these bits get longer. Right. I'll show you what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> because my first one you didn't go experience. as well as planned. But it's, it's, so, it's, it's really easy to do. So you can see on this one, can you see, I didn't place that quite high enough. Ah, up. it missed so the end. So when it folded back, it missed the end. So this you've got to each one... Okay. Just move it up a little bit more so that you realise it's going to come. This is why you said be over cautious with how big your strips are. You might think, oh, actually, I could be a bit more Absolutely. economical with my fabric, but you're better to have a bit too much. Yes. Because I bet it's, especially with a, a smaller stitch length, a bit of a nightmare to try and. Well, unpick yes, and redo. if you're starting to unpick because you've perforated the paper. the paper, you're starting to cause. Yeah. It starts yeah. to get a bit tricky. Okay. So I've moved it up very slightly here. And now I've got the two together lined up. You can see ready to sew my quarter inch seam again. Keep an eye on the website, by the way, because I was about to tell you that virtually everything is sold out, but people are swapping and changing and going with different bundles, which is absolutely fine, but have a look. So if you thought you'd missed out on the rainbow bundle, there's literally a couple of them, and there is a couple of the patterns on their own back in stock. If you want it, go for it, go for it, check out now. I would be really struggling to choose actually on the colours because yeah. I like them all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's open it out, give it a press. So you'll see with your foundation paper piecing that your pattern comes starting to come out on the wrong side of your sheet. Right. So you're sewing on the bit you can see. And, that, and that then but the actual pattern's on the wrong side. So we're going to fold that bit out of the way, trim it down. Why don't you just go get yourself a bit of a production line You get going. yourself into a little bit of a rhythm, rhythm. with it. Um, so once I'd sort of done the first one to work out <laughs> what not to do, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and just to get the hang of the pattern, I then did sort of three or four at once. So I did all my row ones. Yeah. Or my row two, that you know, press yeah. them, cut them. So you could speed, you can speed it up a little bit if you want to. So each block has four quarters, basically, doesn't it? So Absolutely. do you, is this classed as a row then? Like, what, what, what do you mean by a row? So do you keep going along like well, this, or do you really make them into that, blocks? I would say that's a row with a block in. Okay. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. So you make them Five up like this, rows. you make them up yes. as blocks and then sew them into rows. Yes, I would. With you. And I would, I think if you're doing this quilt and you're planning it out a little bit, so there's got to be a little bit of sort of random picking up, but also, so I would plan it in blocks of four. Right. What, what looks nice together and okay. maybe sew four blocks at a time. Yeah. Put all your blocks together. Uh, when you've got all your blocks, lay, lay them out on the floor so you can make sure you haven't got colours near each other. Yeah, make yeah. it really random. Yes, and then put your rows together. Right. And although you've got points to match when you're matching up your blocks, I suppose it doesn't really, they've all the different colours, your eyes aren't drawn to certain points. You're getting the accuracy from your foundation paper piecing techniques, aren't you? Yeah, you've got a little bit of matching to do when you put that block together. Yeah. Um, 
is why it's important just to go past your black line a little. Okay. Else you'll find when you come to put your blocks together, you've got little end bits that flap about. Right. Um, which is not is then harder to deal with and, and um, get in. So, give it a press. Okay, need my Christmas card again. Let's fold it back. I'll do a couple while it's out. Oh, please, these Christmas cards come in handy. That's really <laughs> useful, isn't it? I was thinking, yeah, this year, I was like, right, I'm keeping my Christmas cards and I'm going to cut them up to make gift tags for next year. Well, I, I do, that, do that too. I do, yes. But I just thought, you know what? That's Something fun, handy to take, yes, to do it with. So then okay. a quarter of an inch. quarter of an inch, trim it, it down. So you'll see on this one, when you've got your paper piecing out, it's all it nice does and neat. look lovely and neat, doesn't it? Yeah, well, you've got yeah, a lot of seams. Yeah, with all your little quarter, lot of seams. It, it reminds me of a pleated skirt almost. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you can see all your quarter inch seams are there because you've done all that trimming. Are you getting the hang of this, Elliot? If Elliot is getting the hang of it, then we're, we're on to a winner. Lining up that... Yeah. Lining up that quarter inch again, a little bit extra on that edge. Fold it back, go down the row. So you do get into a rhythm with it, mm -hmm. I think. So you do need to, you know, have a bit more concentration with it, but still, like you say, it's, it is only that one block that you need to conquer. Once you've got that, then, you're, then you are just repeating it. A quarter of a block, repeated. Okay. But it's nice because ev because you're going to do it so that every block is a little bit different. You've yeah. got the fun of sorting all your colours out. Yeah. So you can see it's starting to come together quite nicely. Oh, lovely. Yes. Okay. Fold that one back. Trim. I think we should keep this quilt up all the time because it's so bright. It vibrant, is lovely. I have it? to say, Beth Studley Great. does lovely, lovely things. She Ooh. designs fabric as well. Oh, really? We've got but Beth Studley pattern on again. Really, in Next really week. lovely bright colours. I've got a quilt at home on my bed that uses quite a lot of her fabrics because I really like them. Beth has been a quilter and fabric designer based in the UK. She's been quilting for over 20 years and has had many of her projects published in both sewing magazine and books, number of fabrics uh, collections selling around the world. Amazing. It's the first time I've seen any of her, her patterns. New to us, I think we've got another one of her patterns that's coming up on the show um, tomorrow. She does lovely oh, little baskets and storage pods that's and things it. like that's that as well. Tomorrow, yeah. With John. yeah, really nice. I was saying, and in very, she, I like her fabrics because they often have really bright colours like pink and orange yeah. together. Okay, so that was number five. Um, Leslie, Leslie's asked what thread do you use when you're doing foundation paper piecing? Do you, what, is there a colour that you use when you've got all of the different brights? Well, you will see that on this one that I did at home, I've got a lovely bright green on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. I, and you don't see it actually, all really, do you? Uh, that's because that's what's on my machine and also I do it so that you can see it on the television <laughs> if you need to but you can't see it on that side at all no. I would personally and I tend to always for quilting use a neutral colour like a cream or a white and go with what's that matches the lightest but because you don't see it on the other side it doesn't really matter no. Yeah. No, I don't think Thank you, Leslie. But it does, I mean, that one, you can, where, where's the, you'll see it when I take the paper off, but you'll see it probably doesn't show up as much with the more neutral colour. Right. Of course, when it comes to actually quilting it, then the world's your oyster, isn't it? Oh, yeah. What quilting have they done on this? Now, she's done quite detailed quilting. She's gone into all these little oh, wow. strips in the ditch on all the strips. I think a you real could do circles. A real labour of love. Gosh. Yes. But, you know, it's, it's, it's up to you, isn't you it? You do quite minimal because it's as, got I a mean, lot as you know, Vicky, on. I'm not fond of quilting. I wouldn't do very much. Well, you could <laughs> just do. You cross hatch, just follow where your blocks are, really, couldn't you? You could, yeah. The pattern and the fabrics really speak for themselves. Yeah, I think. absolutely. There's a lot going on anyway. You don't need to worry too much about doing 
excessive so. cruelty unless you want to. Again, trimming again and making it match up. Ooh, try not to move it as I get it to the sewing machine. So you can see why you kind of want everything near each other. Yeah. When I was doing it this at home, I had my sewing machine in the lounge and the ironing machine in our back the room. <laughs> the, the, the ironing board. Ironing machine. In the back room. And my rotary mat on the floor. I haven't got a very big house. So I was like up and down like a yo-yo. <laughs> but it's the only exercise I get, you know. Well, that's it. It's nice to be able to get your steps in. <laughs> Had a message and a picture in from lovely Emma. Hi, Emma. Um, Emma's been doing some foundation paper PC. Oh, look at this! Oh, hilarious. that's this is so brilliant. nice. Love it. Morning, all. I absolutely love foundation paper PC. It's so easy to do, and it's great for using up your scraps. Here's a project I did last year, um, which I made into a Christmas cushion. It's from Emma. Oh, that's so good. That's cool. Love it, love it, love it, Emma. And this is it. I think everybody gets a lot very daunted by foundation paper PC, but actually. You can see Once it's not that know. complicated, really, is yeah. it? Yeah. Not Folding, really. Folding, pressing, stitch. It just looks like and it's a the lot. The thing is, you that. haven't got to worry about seam allowance because you're following a line, which that's easy, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. So, you know, apart from having a smaller machine stitch, you don't need anything special on your machine. Yeah. You don't. I was thinking, I wonder whether you need a different rotary blade, but actually you're not cutting the paper I'm at all. not cutting the paper, no. Obviously I'd cut them out at the start with non-fabric scissors. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, with your husband's scissors, with the ones that he uses the... to open the parcels. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I am keeping all the little bits in a little pile. If you really, really like doing that, you know, you can keep all your little scraps. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and I must say, foundation paper piecing is perfect for for keep, for using up your scraps. If you if you're looking at lots of different patterns, some of them have got really intricate small small pieces. It's brilliant for your scraps. So each block takes five strips of each colour, plus your whatever colour you decide to do the little triangles with. But I got two triangles out of one strip. Just so you know, everything is sold out again. But actually, there's how many of these left? Two. One. One of the uh, the monochrome bundles left. I say monochrome, you've still got loads of lovely bright oranges. You've got loads of designer fabric in here from Moda to Tula Pink. You've, oh, it's not going to hang around. Whoever wants it, if you've got it in your basket, please check it out now. You also do get the pattern included and it's the only way of getting the pattern because the pattern is sold out on its own as well. Busy day today. Oh, creative new year. I love it. Crafting new year. Hope everybody is... Um, it's feeling all right. I know it's, um, it's, it's still a strange time, isn't it? But like Catherine said earlier on, I think it's a brilliant time at the moment to just sit and be able to try new things, try new hobbies or new skills or do something that you love and just hibernate a bit for, for January. My, my, I've decided my, my mantra is going to be just keep calm and craft on. There you go. Perfect. There's no point getting stressed about it all anymore, is there yeah. really? No. <laughs> Um, just so you know, by the way, I think they're all sold out now. Well done if you managed to get anything. Keep your eyes peeled on the website because you never know. You never know. Something might pop back. Graphics are live for the machine that Catherine's using, which is the 570A. We saw, just so you know, 10 of these machines get a home yesterday. Um, it's a very popular machine because it's got the scissors. It's got the automatic scissors. The scissors are good, especially for something like this. Really Definitely. handy to have. That was the first thing that you said that you wanted. Your rider, your demands, <laughs> not like our Mark Francis. All you wanted was a machine that's got the automatic thread cutter. It's really simple though, user friendly, isn't it? It's nice. It is. Machine. It's nice and easy to use. I'm scared of the really bit, um, uh, fancy <laughs> ones on telly that I'll go wrong. So yeah. this one's nice and straightforward, but it does what you want it to do. Absolutely. Right, I'm down to my last little one. Right, so that's a tiny little sliver. The tiny little one, so you can go back to your first bit that you cut off and use that one up. And save. you can save your other bit you cut off for a different yeah. block. They'll all get used.
Last one that you're sewing on that last diagonal line then. Is there a, a line that you're sewing to end your block? Um, so it's just, an, it, they're, they're all diagonal lines, but you mustn't, you, you don't want to think of them as diagonal lines else you'll get confused. You need to think of them as straight lines. Right. Okay. Yeah, so when you're lining everything up, don't think, oh, it's a, a diagonal, I can't get it right. Because you're folding, you're always going to think of it as a straight line because right. they are just all straight lines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll press that one. Doesn't it look nice? I oh, like yellow and gorgeous. pink. gorgeous. Okay. Now then, now we come to the, our little triangles. So we're going to do just the same thing. We're going to fold back and trim the excess here. So you can see I'm lining up the quarter inch of my ruler with the edge of the folded back triangle part that I have folded back. And once again, these are numbered, so it'll tell you which order to do these in. Are they still numbered? They are. Yeah. Oh, I'm just looking. I'm cutting 13 before 12. <laughs> <laughs> it actually doesn't matter which way round you do this one. Now there, I've gone... I've just cut slight, I'm saying slightly too far down. So you want to go down a little way. Now you do want to trim this bit back. You can see there's an awful lot of ends and it's quite bulky. Okay, so this you bit definitely was need all that. to. You've definitely got it right, yeah. Um, get that lined up again with your quarter inch and go right across. Nice. Okay, looks nice and neat. Um, Lorna has asked about free motion on the 570A. Now it doesn't have a free motion foot with it, but the beauty about this machine is it's one that's going to sort of grow with you. So it does have the capability of lowering your feed dogs. It will fit a free motion foot or darning foot, whatever one you want to use if you get an L and a one. Uh, so you'll still be able to do free motion on it. Yes, is the answer, because it also comes with an extension table. Um, but you would need to get a separate foot. It doesn't come with a free motion foot as standard. Hope that answers your question. It's a great machine though, it's a great machine. But most machines you can adapt for free. Yeah. As long as you can put your feed dogs down, you sort it. That's it, Or exactly. have a dining plate. Now, when you come to do these triangles, I've taken one strip and cut it in half mm -hmm. to use for my triangles. You, want, again, need to make sure you've got enough to overlap else you'll find when you cut, trim it all down, you're short here. So err on the side of caution and trim off more. As I say, the more you do, the more you'll okay. be able to judge. But I found about half a strip was right. So lining it up again from a quarter inch, flip that back Yeah. and we're gonna sew across that. Do go quite a little way across this bit because for, further than the line, because when you come to join it together, you can see, you can see on this one, they're quite, because they're quite small, they do tend to flap up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't sewn too far along, you're gonna have bits that could ping out the way and not join nicely. Right. So if you sew a little bit extra, you'll find it helps. And it is important, because like normally in patchwork, you don't reverse but you do want to reverse a little bit because when you come to take your paper off, That's it stops it undoing your stitching. Okay, let's pop the other triangle on. Oh, it's lovely to see so many people sending in their photos of the uh, their FPP. We've had one from Carol. Carol, oh, see, this is what I mean. It opens up so many possibilities oh. of different patterns. Good morning, <laughs> ladies. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, Carol. This is a foundation paper piece, hedgehog cushion. I made my first attempt as well at foundation paper piecing. So it took a while, but she says I loved making it. And the results that you get, the thing is, Carol, how could you do that without foundation piece it, paper piecing? There probably is a way of doing it, but that looks so precise. It's lovely. The accuracy is amazing, Carol. Oh, thanks for sharing that with us. This is what's brilliant, isn't it? Is the possibilities now, different patterns that you can do. When you know that technique, it's the same applies for every pattern you do. Have a look at this. Um, this is from Adele. Happy New Year, Vicky, Catherine and all the team. Uh, thank you for all of your efforts during 2020 and helping us get through a tough year. No, thank you. Thank you, Adele. Um, she says, I've finally had a bash at Foundation Paper Piecing. I love it. Oh, brilliant. She says, here's a piece that I did last year. Love from Adele in, in North Yorkshire. This is what I love. 
Do you know, so many, I hear, I very, very rarely hear somebody say, I've had a go and I didn't like it. There's a, a majority of people say, right, I finally plucked up the courage to do that pattern from that book or, do, or pick up the pattern. Yeah. And I loved it. Yeah, definitely. Have, have a go because yeah. it's, as long as you just follow that process, do it in the right order, make sure your pieces are big enough. So you always want really about an inch extra than the size of the strip or design yeah. that you're doing so that you've got plenty to play with. Uh, and just, you know, fold and place and iron and trim and just keep that little Ripping thing going, going and you'll be fine. And you just, you just get such lovely results. Thank it just do. makes you look like you can do the world's most complicated patchwork. Yeah, it really does, <laughs> doesn't it? It really does. So I'm just ironing back these last two, like that. And I'm going to trim the whole thing down to a square now. So it will, So obviously on the dotted line you are trimming to because you've got to leave enough so that you can piece it. You've got your quarter inch to piece it with the other blocks. So if you follow your dotted lines, you'll be fine. Okay. Do you always make, um, so would you um, make all of your blocks up first uh, and then like you say, have a play around with your different colors yeah. before you start putting together any rows? I, yes, I think I'd make them up in, I'd make up lots of blocks like this. Okay. Um, you know, because because it isn't the speediest process, mm -hmm. but you could probably sit and spend an hour or two and get a block like that. Yeah. So, you know, you could do one or two of those a day, yeah. depending how much time you have for sewing. And then once you've got a whole load, to start laying them out. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. such fun. I love that whole laying out bit, yeah. actually, of quilt making, when you've got all your blocks and you can put it all out on the lounge floor and swap them around so you haven't... That's it, yeah. yeah. Especially with this one, you can really play around with the colours. It's all your, your design. I think everybody who has the same kit, the same fabrics, everybody's is going to look different still, aren't they? Which will be so nice about it. Yeah. Yeah. So it might take you a little while to make them, but send in the pictures when you have them. Yes, please do, <laughs> absolutely. And when you've got them all laid out on the floor, top tip is to take a photograph of it, take it through your camera, because often you can spot through a photograph if something doesn't look right, mm -hmm. which you don't always see when you're looking directly out of it. Plus, it'll help you keep it in the right order. Yeah, good idea, good, really good idea. Yeah, I think uh, we're talking about that with the colour wheel and tonal, um, uh, we had like a tonal red perspex. I mean, if you go onto your phone and put it onto mono, so you see it in black and white as well. That gives you a good gauge of your lights and darks and that you've got everything all sort of nicely, evenly placed. Especially with your pattern bundle, that would be good. So Catherine we... can just do it by eye and put them into lights, darks and, and, and brights. But actually, if you are working with your own stash, maybe put your phone onto black and white mono setting or go through one of those uh, red perspex tonal estimators that we've had and you can see the different tones. Yeah, really good idea. I, I always think it's really fun playing around with colour yeah. and fabrics. And do you know what? It's it's personal. It's what you like as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So there we are all trimmed up. So yeah. it's really smart. Now, what I would advise is that you don't take the paper off until you are ready to sew it to other blocks. Because I, I will, will take the paper off to show you on this one. But because they're all diagonal, which means they're all slightly cut on the bias, and they could all start to expand. So leave them in. Which you don't want to happen. As long as possible. So you can see, because I've got had a small... Um, stitch oh, length. stitch length. I couldn't think what it was called then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's giving you that perforated, it's lovely, giving that clean Absolutely. Edge. I now, find this so satisfying. It is. Now, if you've got the, the lovely paper, you'll find this bit is even easier. Yeah, well done if you've got that carol dope paper. Julie's asked a trivia question, I know. Trivial question, I know, but I bought the brilliant mini iron. Uh, leaving it on continuously, continually, would it damage it? Um, we always told to switch them off. We're always told to switch them off. I don't think it would damage it. I don't think it would damage it, but I think that 
I, I mean, don't I, I, I don't think I don't know. I think it's okay to leave it on for something like this because you're coming back to it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You're and, losing and, it. A you lot. know, if you've got to put it on every time and wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they've got time for a cuppa. But as I'm standing here, the little light is going on and off. So perhaps it's got a little thing that it cools down if you're not using it. Maybe. Yeah. I so don't know. A lot of them do, don't they? So as you as you're pulling them off, just be careful where you're starting. Even though you've reversed, I would just put your finger just to help stop the stitches pulling up because you don't want any of that stitching to come undone. It's so satisfying. It, it is, is quite satisfying. satisfying if you yes. are using just regular photocopy paper, the best one to use is probably the cheapest one that you can yeah, get. Yeah, just the, the most lightweight, definitely. Nothing heavy and expensive and nice because, look, you're going to rip it all up anyway, aren't yeah. you? <laughs> And so you would can, you wait until you've sewn all of your blocks so together until you I do this? would wait till I'd got four, like oh, okay. four for that. If I was going to put be putting blocks together, I'd do four, then I'd do all the ripping off and then yeah. I'd piece them together. Right. But you can just, you know, if you're going to just make lots of these and then sort them out before you put them into your blocks, I would just stack them up with the paper on until you're ready. Then you, oh, you could have a happy evening in front of the telly, oh, yeah. just taking all the paper oh, out, couldn't so you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And if you get any little bits of paper still left in, lots of people say if you put a little, just a bit of damp cloth or something and that will help. Or a little pair those. of tweezers, oh, yeah, we'll pull idea. them out. Yes. So you can see they're coming out quite nice and easily. So remind us what you put the stitch length down to. I put the stitch this. length down to one and a half. Right. I think your default's usually about two and a half. So yes, just a little bit smaller. Um, it does advise that as well in your patterns. So all those in all the instructions that I've shown you today are all in your pattern. They're nicely, it's nicely explained and photographed for you as well. Oh good. I'm excited to see more of the uh, the Love from Beth patterns. I think we've got a few that are literally on their way. We've spotted them on the system, so I think that they'll be on the shows in the next few weeks. Right. And that's so, definitely tomorrow. So I think you can see my you can see the stitching now, and I do think for the lady that asked, I think a lighter colour is the way to go to match with your lighter fabrics or to tone with your lighter fabrics because you don't want any threads to show through, do you? Oh, that looks so beautiful in this but colour But you can as well, see now at this stage, now I've taken the paper out, can you see what can happen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you've got to be quite careful when you start to put them together. Could I put a bit of best press? Put them together? You could to hold them all together. Yeah, you could. A little bit of spray starch, especially if you're a bit anxious, yeah, about it. Um, when you come to match, you can see that these triangles are where you're going to match. And hopefully... It's as you put your blocks together, oh, yes. you've got quite a bit of matching up here. When you do the, you've, your central blocks, you've only got your triangles to match. Oh, and okay. they should, they should hopefully oh, be you. quite accurate because yeah. you followed the lines. Um, <laughs> there's no saying no. Yeah, you printed out that same pattern, the template that Beth's given you. So yeah, you know, that's so the lines. You, this should it. be fine. And and you should when you do this, but just as you come to put your blocks together, you're going to see you're going to have quite a bit to match right, up Right, so would there. you pin at each point then? Do you know what? I probably would actually. And I'm quite liking the idea. I mean, I didn't get to the point of actually putting lots of different blocks together to see yeah. what it was like. Um, but I do quite like your idea of the, the spray starch just to stop them stretching. The yeah. other little bit you've got to be careful with, can you see on my one here, those very small bits at the end, even when you extend it, it doesn't go all the way down. Ah. So you do just want to make sure that that is Touching. in and out of the way. And that was even with me going kind of quite well past. But you do get that little bit there and you don't want that to flip out. So the actual joining, you've got to really be quite as, as careful as when you were doing your foundation piecing. Right. Yes. So I'd say get all your foundation piecing done and then concentrate on your joining. And obviously it all goes together with a quarter inch seam. Okay. You would want your quarter inch seam foot on for that. And probably because when you get down to joining these parts, you've got a lot of fabric here where these all meet. 
Right, so, so you... when you start to join quite a few, you can see on this bit, there's yeah, a bulky. lot going on as you get two blocks together. Um, so, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea if you've got a walking foot to put your walking foot on just to get over those kind of chunky bits. Oh, good idea. Good yes. idea. Because and... you can't, you can't with this press seams in different directions. They've got to go in the way that you're piecing it. Mm -hmm. So they're always going to be like that. Mm -hmm. You can't have one one way, one the other. So when you come to put it together, yeah, if you pop your walking foot on, then you'll be able to get that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so then it's got like a lovely border around as well, hasn't it? So they've then got a border and it's got a border binding. and she's used all her scraps to make the binding. Oh, I love doing idea. that. It's so nice. It just brings it all together. Um, I can't remember from the pattern. Let me have a quick look to see how big your border is. But again, I would cut that all from the same colour as your centre bit. Yeah, because I think idea. it pull, sort of pulls it all together. Yeah, if that's you've what put Beth's one done. aside to do that. Um, where's her cutting instructions? Okay, you have just 12 inches well, times the width of 30 centimetres wide times the width of the fabric for the background and the border. I think that's the total. Right, okay. That's the total. So you've got absolutely heaps in this bundle. I mean, it's an, the most amazing bundle because you've got so much fabric. I know, even with the smaller bundle, which is five and a half metres, you still have loads of fabric to play around with. Um, are they gone? They've all gone. They've all gone. They've all gone. Well done, everybody who's managed to get something. So there are 80 blocks in the entire quilt. So it isn't a quick quilt, is no, it? No, it's not. But do you know, maybe this is one that you need to start making now for your friend's birthday. <laughs> I don't think they're getting this one. <laughs> <laughs> Much as I love them. <laughs> if I was going to make this, I'd make it for me, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is a bit of a labour of love, isn't it? It's one of those that you will absolutely love it and you'll be so proud of it. In fact, there was a, we've had so many messages in this hour of people who have been saying that I've taken the plunge for the foundation paper piecing and I love it. Absolutely, so, go yeah. for it. It's a two-inch border. I found it. So it's ah, a two-inch border. Lovely. And then just a small binding around the edge, nice. which I think she says is one and a quarter. All in the instructions anyway. It is, it is in all the in there. It's, it's nicely... Nicely done. Jerry's asked, would you press those centre seams open? Uh, just ordered and I'm going to give it a try for the first time. Go for it, Jerry. Um, these ones. Yes. Do you know what? I, I, I didn't, but I think if you can, it mightn't be a bad idea. But there's such small pieces on this bit because they're, that, they're this, these tiny strips on these ends. It wouldn't matter if you didn't. This is all going to get quilted and backed. Right. So I, I don't think it would matter if you didn't, but if you were feeling particularly... Particularly bulky, you wanted to give it you a... You could, but yeah. There's, so, there's, you know, you've got like about four diff five different fabrics there. So it's going to be fiddly to do it. I would personally... <laughs> be inclined just to give it a good press on the front side. Absolutely, lovely. Thank you ever so much. Um, if I start making it now, it'll be in time for my sister's birthday, which is today, New Year baby. Yeah, if you start it now, then you get it done for next year. Good plan. Absolutely, good plan, Amanda. Happy birthday to your sister. And no worries, uh, Julie said, thank you for asking my question. Uh, she says, oh, I feel like it's a friend in Sewing Street. Always look forward. I'm looking forward to this year with you all. Um, honestly, we feel the same way. We feel exactly the same way. Of course, ask any questions. This is the great thing about having everything live and interactive. Any questions, get them in. Um, this is from Karina. Wow, love this, Karina. Fantastic. Love it. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Here's a quilt that I made using foundation paper piecing. Uh, we had to design the FPP pattern ourselves. Wow, that is really, really talented. Uh, beautiful, beautiful quilt, Karina. I love it. What great, um, great colours as well, really popping, aren't they? Your Union Jack, I love it. Um, I don't think we've got anything to round up, so thank you ever so much, Catherine. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. I'm, I'm not going to see you on Yarn Lane today, am I? No, no. No, we've got Claire from Nitty Critters in later on, but when are you back in with us? Uh, I believe I'm back on the 15th of January. 15th, lovely. Yes. And when are you back on Yarn Lane, do you know? I think also on the 15th. 15th. Brilliant, yeah. we'll see you then. Lovely, thank you so, thank so much. You. It is us, it's us, it's a Friday, isn't it? We're here every Thursday, Friday, aren't we? Cat's here every Thursday, Friday, and 
Sunday with Debbie. Um, everybody who managed to get the circus top quilt, well done. If you did get uh, the bundles as well, congratulations. Have a look on the website. Uh, through all the different fabrics. Yesterday we launched Libs Elliot and there seems to be a flurry of people who have been checking out on Libs Elliot this hour. So I'm presuming taking our advice and making the most of that. The little mini iron as well that uh, Catherine was using is also on the web. So over the next few minutes, have a bit of a browse, have a look through, scout through. It's only one postage and packaging. Mark is going to be joining me with my favourite coat, I absolutely love it. Boiled wool is gorgeous. Kat's really annoyed that she's just bought a new coat because she really, really wants this. We've got gorgeous colours as well in boiled wool coming up. Great bundles, lovely pattern with Mark right after this. New years are always about trying new things. So why not try out a new hobby? From the 4th to the 10th of January, Sewing Street will be bringing you a week packed with demonstrations on new techniques, beginner's tutorials and brand new projects. With everything from ribbon art, making your own sleepwear, new quilting techniques and beginner's homeware makes. We have something for everyone. Sign up to our email newsletter and follow us on social media to find out what's on when. And watch our New Year new hobby shows from 8am to 1pm on Monday the 4th to Sunday the 10th of January on Freeview 72, Sky 670, our YouTube channel or Facebook Live. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. We'd like to say a massive thank you to all of you for supporting Sewing Street since we began this year. 2020 has been a tough year for everyone, so we are very proud of how far we have come. And we couldn't have done it without you. From starting in February for an hour a day, building up to being live for five hours, as well as launching Yarn Lane. We hope you've had as much fun watching us as we've had bringing you tutorials from our expert guests. And a little bit of entertainment along the way. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year from all at Sewing Street and all the best for 2021. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harborough. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I also just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have a seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, so uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say, don't get disheartened. Take your um, learning journey slowly. Don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt. Build up your skills, um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have. Welcome back. Happy New Year for anybody who might be just joining us today. If you've had a, a little um, cheeky lion to start the year, I don't blame you. Although, how dare you catch saying we've had a brilliant show this morning. It's flying by already. Thank you for staying with us. Um, one hour left of Sewing Street and then we're jumping to Yarn Lane. Um, which is great. We've got Claire, she's just arrived in this morning um, from Nitty Critters and 
all of the projects are coming up. We've got all new crochet animal toys, which are amazing, adorable. So stay tuned. Um, that's coming up later. Have you ever tried crochet, Mark? I do do a bit of crochet. Do you? I'm very new at crochet. So okay. I'm just doing the basic uh, stitch. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've, I've got a scarf. I'm yeah. attempting to make a Doctor Who scarf. Okay. So it should be about 20 foot long. Amazing. It's about six foot long at the moment. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I will. Um, what I will. about knitting? Haven't tried knitting. I no. wasn't allowed to when I was at school. Right. Okay. We have to. Uh, you have to stick around. Speak to Claire. I'd like to do learn. You knitting. met Claire, didn't you, just then? Yeah, just just now. She oh. came in. She went hello. It's very I thought, busy. I thought I'd better busy. go and say hello. Was yeah. there no one out there? Because we're all in here. <laughs> I know. I know. It's <laughs> manic today, isn't it? It's lovely that we're in our big studio. That even though you know through all the restrictions, we're still able to be on air and we're still able to do demonstrations all day long today. So. Let's get cracking because it'll be weird when we're actually allowed near each other. I think, you know, when you watch repeats, I was watching a few things over Christmas that were reruns of last year and I was thinking, oh, they're standing really close to each other. It looks odd now, doesn't it, when you see people hugging? Well, it and... dates the programme instantly yeah. because you know, well, that's not been made in the last 12 months. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it's so true. It's weird. Uh, right, anyway, this coat is brilliant. We all need a nice new coat for the new year. It's ever so cold at the moment, and this is beautiful. None of my coats are fitting me at the moment. So Why's I have bit? nabbed this. Why is that? <laughs> it was because of the mince pies, obviously. Um, we had a bit of um, a, a model off here. Who wore it best? I think Mark looks amazing. In fact, keep going. He's at a full photo shoot. Oh, no, it's not. Oh no, sorry, me to squeal. <laughs> oh, we didn't have a twirl on this one. It was the uh, it was the shirt, wasn't it? Oh, look at my face, Elliot. <laughs> Can you go up? That's better. Thank oh, you. That's the telly face. What's he doing? That should have been deleted, Elliot. Delete it now. <laughs> Dear me. Oh yeah, they're better. That's nice. Oh, thank you. I love it. The colour's beautiful. It's so lovely in the bald wall. It's beautiful. So lovely. It is so beautiful. We've got boiled wool, which we love. Now, for anyone who's not worked with boiled wool before, don't worry. Um, we'll talk to you about anything that you might need to know working with the boiled wool. First of all, though, let's get the pattern. I love this waterfall style. It's mm. really glam, but just easy to wear as well. You feel like you're in your dressing gown. Yeah, oh, it looks really absolutely. glamorous. And there is a lot of similarities between this and the dressing gown. Oh, actually. really? But it does look really good. Oh, I love it. Um, it's just one of those for a nice New Year's Day walk. It's gorgeous. £9.99. Do you know what it reminds me of? Lovely um, Jules Fallon, who taught you to sew. Mm. Whenever I see her, she's always wearing a great waterfall coat. It just is such a beautiful collar to it. And it's got a great tie. I mean, you can use this with lots of different fabrics. Again, we were talking about with tweeds, maybe it would look really nice. You just need to make sure that it's the same... It's a reversible that, fabric, basically. It, yeah, so the same both sides. So there's lots of wools that would do that. It does give other options on there. It just says wool types. Okay. So it's quite a broad spectrum yeah. on there. Tweed. Uh, yeah, it says tweed as well. Double-faced fabrics such as tweed, wool types, ponty. Sherpa. Sherpa suede. Oh, that would look different as well, wouldn't it? Suede would be really nice. Um, extra fabric needed to match the plaids. Yeah, if you have a check or stripes, you might need extra. Okay. Or you could just go crazy and just go free fall and have the checks going everywhere. Nice. <laughs> I mean, that would look amazing, wouldn't it? Uh, we've got that lovely tweed on the website, we're thinking, the maroon one. You know, the one with the gold running through it? That would look really nice on this one as well. Uh, the pattern itself is only £9.99, a brilliant, brilliant price point. Um, we've got... Oh, sorry, your microphone's just rustling. Sorry. It's all right. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> just adjusting your twilly. I was adjusting, my, well this is a proper cravat this time. Oh. Got a proper cravat on today. I thought I'd go all the polka dots. Oh, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, all the polka dots. Uh, so the pattern comes in two different sizes. So this was the six, 16 to, sorry, 6 to 14. We also have the 16 to 24. It looks literally exactly the same. It is the identical pattern, just different sizes. But it's quite a sort of, again, like with the shirt, it's quite generous, isn't mm. it, really? It's quite a loose fitting. Uh, yes, coat. quite a loose fitting, so you just need to 
just you can probably measure it up with the pattern pieces itself. Yeah. I just check the back piece because that's probably the simplest piece which you'll see in a minute to, right. to check the fit. Okay. It's quite nice and relaxed. You want it to better wrap around you, don't you? Absolutely. As long as it fits on the shoulders, that's the uh, that's the main bit. Um, we've got plenty of boiled wool options, different colours, and we've put together big bundles as well. Now, the big bundles, I'm going to be brutally honest with you, when they arrived today, they were on the trolley yesterday, and I said, right, we're not going to fit these on the desk. I mean, to have the half metres. So what we've done... To get it to, um, yeah, we both shouted at Elliot, who was trying to bring it all into the studio. We were like, no, leave it, leave it. I'll just explain to everybody that you do get four and a half metres. It's massive. It's covered in the same posting packages, uh, packaging, though, so don't worry. And four and a half metres, I'm presuming it's going to be plenty to be able to make the largest size. I was size. shocked at the size of the box that turned up at my house <laughs> because I was sent four and a half of the camel, four and a half of the red burgundy colour. Yeah. And this is, and someone's... I said, what on earth have you been ordering? I said, nothing. <laughs> nothing that big anyway. No. Oh, I mean, it, it will obviously um, come in big packaging and it will be under one post in packaging still. Brilliant. This is such a gorgeous colour. Absolutely gorgeous colour. You can also buy it by the half metre. So four and a half metres, which is enough for the largest size, is $97.99. If you do want it by the half metre, it's $10.99. And this is what half a metre looks like. Ooh, it's very wide. Nice and wide, yes. Mm. Very wide. And it's lovely quality. Do you like working with boiled wool? First, this and the waistcoats I, I did last time I was on, that's the first time I worked with boiled wool, and it is really lovely. And wool generally is quite a forgiving uh, fabric. You can sculpt it almost right. with the iron. Oh, wow. Um, so if you do get little tiny puckers or it's not quite sitting right, give it a good press. So you'll probably find that those little imperfections will disappear. And the beauty about it, it doesn't fray. No, not at all. Not at all. I cut this out about two or three weeks ago and it hasn't and it won't fray. Oh, amazing. So you don't need to worry about finishing your, your, um, your seams too much, do you, on the inside or anything like no, that? No, not at all. Amazing. Uh, this is the Camel, which is, again, one of my favourites. This is classic, isn't mm. it? This would be something that you would wear and have in your wardrobe for years and years and years to come. And I think it's actually sort of timeless and ageless. I think somebody who's younger wear this and somebody, my, I know all of the generations of my family would love this coat. Yeah, absolutely. Really and as smart. John Scott pointed out, he when we were doing the waistcoats, he would go, for, he said for the waistcoat, the camel, because it would go with a lot more. It will. It will. Your camel will go with your denim jeans. It will go with a really lovely um, black smart trousers. It will look lovely with a dress out. It would look really nice with black jeans as well. <laughs> Cass thinking it's perfect as well because it's quite a long, nice length coat. You, you can shorten it, but um, she's one that she would chuck over her pajamas to go and walk the dog in. <laughs> there you go. Gorgeous, isn't it? It's Oh dear. Oh, for all my walks that I'm going to be doing over the summer, absolutely lovely. I love this coat so much. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. And it wraps round just like my dressing gown. It's so comfy. <laughs> it's lovely. Um, we've also got the camel by the half metre. Um, it's £10.99. Jog Scott isn't wrong. It will go with absolutely everything. He John is Scott's our fashion. never wrong. He's never wrong. Rarely wrong. Oh, Rarely. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rarely wrong. Uh, this is called silver. Again, classic grey. This would look really nice for smart for work wear, actually. I'm thinking this would look really smart. Anybody who potentially is going back to work in um, uh, this year. And lots of uh, my friends and, and family, my sister's been working at home since, since March. So, um, yeah, those of you that are getting ready, fingers crossed, to be going back into work. Well, a nice new smart coat like this. <gasps> Gorgeous and boiled well. It's it, it is beautiful quality. It has pockets as well, Mark, doesn't it? Does have pockets. Important. Essential. It? it is. It is absolutely. Um, if you want it by the half meter, this one's called silver. It's got lots of different sort of flecks in it, though. It's got lovely different coloured flecks wool in there. It's not just one plain grey. Uh, you've got lighter. You've got darker. It's like charcoal colours. It's beautiful. £10.99 by the half metre. The other two, we don't have bundles, we have them by the half metre though. So we've got the navy and teal, or the other way around, navy and teal. This is teal. I, again, love this colour. Do you have a, a favourite? I think I'd, I'd really be sport for choice with this. I can't make up my mind which is my fave. 
I don't know. Um, uh, I like the red yeah. quite, quite a lot. Um, that teal's really nice. So that looks a bit darker on screen, actually, doesn't it? It's a it bit... does look a bit darker. I think but our it... monitor's a bit darker than what people are seeing at home. Oh, OK, fair um, enough. It is like a peacock, uh, peacock blue, isn't it? It's beautiful. That teal, boiled wool, half a metre, £10.99. We've also got the navy blue. The navy blue is this one by the half metre. Haven't got the bundles available, but buy as much as you want. The maximum that you're going to need for the largest size is four and a half meters, which is nine units, 10 pounds and 99 pence. Oh, thank you, Pauline. She says the burgundy one suits you, Vicky. I love the burgundy. It's lovely, especially this time of year. How much fabric do you need for a size 16? We've had a question come in. Right, Kat, we'll try and work it out for you. Um, there's different options actually because there's a longer sleeve and is there a, sli a, a, a sleeveless you sleeveless can, you can like leave the sleeves off yeah oh nice um there you go i think can you see your measurements there your body measurements oh, where's the fabric you won't need any more than four and a half i don't think unless or is it five yards on some of it hang on it's quite it's quite wide i think the fabric is wider is it 60 inches wide this one yeah um so the we'll most, have a look, we'll have a look. yeah, I'm pretty sure. So they won't need any more than four and a half for any of them. Amazing. But even then, I didn't use all of it. I, I cut a 14 out actually, or yeah, the size yeah. 14, uh, and I didn't, and I had stuff left over. Oh, fantastic! There you go. Um, I hope that helps. Um, these are how wide? 55 to 57 wide. So they're lovely wide um, walls. If if you go onto the website, is the back of the pattern a picture on the web, cat? I think so. I think it might be. We'll have a look and um, and we'll get back to you. So then you can have a real good sort of scan through and work out how much fabric you're going to need by the half metre. Uh, right. So working with boiled wool for anybody who's not worked with boiled wool before, any sort of troubleshooting things that you might need to do with your machine or any things you might be need to be aware of. Yeah, it's quite thick. OK. So be careful about how many layers you're sewing together. This pattern wasn't written for particularly boiled wool. Okay. So there are a couple of areas where you may struggle to get the amount of layers it says through your machine. If ah. you decide to work with a different fabric, a lighter fabric, then you won't have any problems. Okay. Um, but the boiled wool, a couple of layers is fine. Three or four, you start, you might be a bit thick. Five, it's, you probably, yeah. you won't, you'll struggle to get it through your machine. Mm -hmm. So just be mindful of that. But there are some little uh, hacks I've done to this to, nice. to, to get round all of that. Okay, we'll go so through we'll, them we'll then. We'll cover those. Um, but it's nice forgiving fabric, nice to work with, lovely to cut. It won't fray. Great. So use your very best scissors and cut it nice and neatly and you won't have to finish any edges. No overlocking. You can put bias binding on the edge if you wish. That would look really nice. nice but smart. you don't have to. It doesn't need it. You did bind one of the, the sections. If you open it up, um, then you'll see I just uh, to, to show it off I just put some bias Ooh, binding yeah. round the pockets there lovely um, I didn't have a matching one but it looks quite nicer as a little bit Doesn't of a pop really of colour it's a little accent but if you wanted feature. you could bias bind all of the insides but I know yeah. you've got a, a bias binder maker there on your on your bench haven't you yeah we've got bias binder makers we had them on the show yesterday in fact um, Alison you did a demonstration of how you use them so yes we do have the different sizes mm. um, the uh, the red, by the way, is the most popular at the moment. It's ninety-seven ninety-nine for your bundle, or by the half meter, it's available at nine ninety-nine. Um, brilliant. I did try making a bias binding out of the bald wool. I was not very successful. <laughs> well, you'd have to fold and fold. It's yeah, too it, bulky it, again. It, it was too bulky. Okay. So if you're going to make your own bias binding, I'd suggest you getting a cotton or some other fabric you may have in your bundle or your stash at home. Sorry, to to, to do that if you wanted to do that. Or like mine, you can leave it naked. Yeah. without the binding yeah. it is supposed to have a trim which i did bring along i didn't i sewed it together but i didn't actually use it in the end what, so this, that was going to be all around the edge yeah it? this is an enormous long sausage <laughs> and uh, it's got mitered corners built into it oh, oh there you go like that and that's what the pattern has but then i realized you'd have to be sewing through five layers of board oh. to get to the last stage and i thought yeah. that's not going to look pretty no so i left it off and i thought he doesn't actually need it no it doesn't the other, now, the thing that really I, took me a while to get into my head is because it's a two-sided fabric, it's the same both sides, 
you are actually looking at that coat at both the wrong and the right side of the fabric at the same time. Right, how do we conquer that? Did you put a mark to know which was your right or wrong with some chalk or...? Uh, well, no, I just used a bit of instinct when I was putting it together because okay. I, was, I did uh, initially kind of couldn't get it into my head that that's what was going on. And then when I used my instinct to made it, I looked at it and thought, ah, that's what's going on. So if you look at it there, the, the capelet section is actually the wrong side yeah. of the fabric. Yeah, because it falls it does. back over on itself. Yes. Now, it has that's a seam, which side. I'll show you here. So I have made a start on this, just so I don't get lost in the right and wrong sides of it. I, well, is there <laughs> a right or a wrong side well, to it, technically? Th technically, there is. The instructions will refer to a right and a wrong side. And this is what so I pick couldn't... One. Yes, I couldn't get this in my head because it referred to the capelet section that we see yeah. as the wrong side, which technically it is the wrong side, but I'm thinking that can't be the wrong side because I can see it on the outside of my coat. Ah, right, That's... so you've just got to get your head around the... Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, so I've sewn it, I've made a start here. Have you got your head around it now? I have got my head around it now. Okay. Um, and it's actually quite a nice, simple thing to put together uh, once you've got your head around it. So uh, I've... The first bit you'll do is sew up this section here, which is the back of the cape. Okay. Now it tells you to do a flat felt seam. Again, it's a bit too bulky for that. I don't think it's necessary. So all I've done is a plain seam and just sewn it down. Oh, nice. You could put some bias binding down it if you wish, or if you wanted to persevere, maybe leave a bit more of a seam allowance down the back. If you twiddle it round. You're not, you're not going to see that underneath part anyway, no. are you? No, but that's what I thought. You're not, unless the wind whips it up, but that's... Yeah. That's you're not going to wear it up. I love it, that. It's, like, it's almost like an Inverness cape. That's the first step you'll do. And then you'll sew the shoulders up, which I'll pop the shoulders on there. So those will be on the inside. But look what's happening. So you'll end up with it. Let me just get that. So that's the shoulder seam mm -hmm. there. That's your cape, but that's also, that's the wrong side of your fabric, but you'll see it on the outside. But look, we've got a seam here. And this baffled me as well. You've got a seam that's going to be by your neck, not ah. hidden underneath. Now, I did a bit of a hack on, on that one. Yep. And I actually flipped the seam to the other side. So on the one you've got over behind you, if you have a look, uh, you'll see that the, if, you lift it, if you lift that up. One second. Oh. Sorry, Vicky's got to move. <laughs> <laughs> Get on my chair. There you go. You'll see there's a that's the seam there, which you wouldn't normally have there. No. And because I flipped it round, but what the instructions say is to just go straight along the shoulders. Right. And then you'll cover that raw edge with a piece of bias binding. So let's do that now. So I'll pin that together. Your dress is very well fitted today. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> no one can see. I'm not just dressed. But you know, I hadn't noticed until you turned around. I do oh, apologise. No. It's my mum's. Everything's nothing. Is it your mum's? Yeah, nothing's fitting me. I need um, <laughs> need a nice big coat. I'll just hide under this for the with next big, thick three months. Do you have those stretchy trousers with a massive piece of elastic in the front? Oh yeah, they look they're the best. Really, I think, I'll, I think I'll wear them forever now. <laughs> they're so comfy. <laughs> Thank you, Kat. Oh dear. I think some men should have those trousers as well with a big piece of elastic rather than that would be fab. Ah, oh, do you know what I'd help with um, bulky seams? You're right, Alison Marion. Have you got a humper jumper with your duty machine? No. You but bet I, you do. I, I, I bet you do. Do we? I hadn't noticed. So it's I like a little ramp that goes at the back of your foot to help with any bulky bits. Yes. I know what you mean, and if, especially if you're starting off at a bulky bit. Yeah, um, yeah that's I have it. seen people make them out of s lots of layers oh, of all. fabric, yeah, yeah. like a denim or something, yeah. that, that won't collapse too much. That's it, that's it. I know he is, isn't he? Dominique's just said, he's a right cheeky one today, isn't he? <laughs> he is Clive, I know. Oh, is that Clive? Oh, don't listen to him, he knows nothing. These okay. some nice strong pins for this, I'm guessing, or your clips. Do you use, ever use clips? I do actually, and I've only, Clive had them, I thought, what do we need those for? I've got pins. But sometimes if you're working with more delicate fabrics that yeah. can bruise easily, yeah. like uh, silks or cotton lawn, mm -hmm. you can easily damage the fabric by pinning it too much. Yeah. And it bruises, leaves holes that don't yeah. really go away, or it puckers the fabric and, it, and the, the colour kind of, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It kind of twists the fibres around and it's not, and you it's lose the... handy then. So I use clips for that. 
Um, and I thought they wouldn't hold anything together because they're just like little pegs, aren't they? But they do. I was surprised. I could highly recommend them. Oh, Laurie, you're absolutely right. You could do, virtually do it all, couldn't you? Laurie said uh, this would be a great project for us to use the overlocker as well. I suppose you could construct it all on your overlocker, could you not? Well, exactly, yeah. The, the coat that you mentioned of Jules's, yeah. um, the Bianca coat, she recommends that you sew it, the whole thing, on the overlocker. The only bit you don't is the pocket. Wow, yeah. But I've got an idea of the pockets as well to do something different, so we'll come to that in a minute. Once I've got this bit. There we go. There we go. Um, but because it's bald wool and it doesn't fray, you don't need to necessarily overlock all the seams on the inside. Yeah, absolutely. So if you don't have an overlock, a it's, locker, it doesn't it, matter. It, no. There we go. Okay. So that next seam is finished. Mm -hmm. Now, if you wanted to, if you're doing it the way the pattern suggests, let me just get that the right way around. Look at the size of that thread. That's enormous. Um, you could put some bias binding over that if you wanted to. Or you could do my hack and flip this seam to the other side of what the pattern suggests. Okay. It's a lovely big cape, isn't it? So what you're gonna what you're gonna get now? This is not sewn up at the sides. So that's the back. Oh, with I the love seam it. down there. And you see the shoulders, that's the seam, the nice seam you'd normally get on the shoulder there. Yeah. But where your neck goes, you have that raw edge, and that's okay. what needs to be covered up. Right. I hope that's clear. Oh yeah, it, it is. It, it, went, it took me a while in my little head to, to work that out. <laughs> okay, the pocket is an inseam pocket on this one. So it's just like you would do with, oh, I've got thread there, with um, like if you put a, a pocket in a skirt mm -hmm. or a dressing gown, they're quite often in the seam. But it's only built with one peat pocket bag, not two pieces. Oh, I didn't know that, okay. So this is one I hadn't done before till I got this. So I've already sewn the ear of the pocket yeah. Onto the back piece. So it doesn't have another one of those that goes on mm, the other side? That's I know. Ah. It's, it's like magic, isn't it? So what we're going to do is sew the seams together, but that will go over the front on the inside, mm -hmm. and then you'll top stitch it onto the pocket, onto the front of the coat. So if you have a look at your coat, you will see it's got a row of stitching on the outside yeah this row here and that's what secures that one ah. piece into place oh nice so there's your your line of stitching that i was talking about and that will give you a lovely big pocket that's it of course if you didn't fancy doing that you could miss that ear off okay you could sew up the sides if you wanted and you could put some patch pockets on the front yeah which i think if i was doing it again that would probably be my preference you'd get more in it yeah you can put like your kids toys <laughs> or your car keys yeah, yeah. or a spare screwdriver or yeah. something they're still like, nice size pockets though aren't they but yeah there? absolutely you can get your hands in them so let's get this together pair pin oh talking of pairs there's someone making uh some where was she sharing it? I don't know if it was on the Sewing Street fan page or the Sewing oh, okay. Bee fan page making the 12 days of Christmas out of felt oh, and there's right. beautiful it's such a lovely little book that that, that she had it's really worth I, I was really uh, amazed looking at all the embroidery you did oh lovely. earlier yeah she made little pears that's what made me think of it and little partridges yeah, and a little that's lord's a lovely leaping idea, isn't it? okay the pocket is sewn onto the back with just a one centimeter seam allowance so you can use the one and a half centimeter seam allowance Got threads everywhere. What's going on? Can you adjust the length to this as well? Yes, I cut out the longest length. Okay. There is a short. You can just it marks where to cut a shorter version, but you can make it as long as you want. Yeah. Or you can extend the cape if you wanted to make that. Oh, I, I that, think this is a lovely fuller. big cape, anyway, isn't it? It's like an Inverness cape, like you'd see the old Peter Cushing Sherlock Holmes wearing, yeah. or or John yeah. Pertwee yeah, used to absolutely. wear. It's that kind of feel. That's what it is. 
And there's options to miss the sleeves off, which is, well, it's not like a pattern piece, you just don't put them on. No, yeah. And just make sure you cut it nice and neatly so you haven't got to finish the bald wall edges. Or you could round it off with, with some bias binding. Half a star of the 16 to 24 has gone. Oh. If you are a, um, you know, in between sort of 14 to 16, would you go with the larger pattern? I would, yeah. Go with the larger I'd one because you can always take it in. Personally, I'd rather have a larger coat. Yeah. Um, because of its because Well, of you its can design. always take it in, can't you, as opposed to... Oh, bless her. She's coming with all the cuddly toys. Oh, cuddly we're... toys and teeth for me. Are we going to tell a story? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Look at this. Look what she just bought me. <laughs> Larry the Llama. See, this is the sort of crochet you need to learn, Mark. It is, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm not there yet, I'm afraid. We can just perch here with me for the next, <laughs> for the next hour. So oh. you're going to leave an opening to put your hands in, because that's essential with a coat. And we'll just scoot down to where I'm going to start again. Foot down, that helps, doesn't it? Danielle said, thank you, Mark. I'm watching while sewing. Uh, the maid are milking now. Oh, this oh. is the lady then? Yeah. This is Danielle. She's been, I don't know, maybe it is Sewing Street, uh, because she's Fun been pages. sharing it every day. She'll be doing another one. They're so beautiful. So she's doing the maid are milking. Oh, so excited. Oh, I'll have a look for that. Have a look on the, uh, the fan page when we get home. I'm very, ow, what's oh, a pin there? That's because I put it in it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing too well. They're not your friends no, today, are no, they? They're not. I've stabbed myself. I might leak. I'm not sure. Oh, yes, I'm leaking. <laughs> I might leak. <laughs> Please be careful. Do you need a plaster? Don't, it's not yeah, too bad. We've got first aiders in the gallery. Don't get... Um, don't leak on the boiled wool. <laughs> no, I'm trying not to. No, it's not too Elliot, bad. can give the kiss a life. Oh, no, there's an offer. Although he is advised not to in these times. Been advised not to. What by his lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> are you two both the, the health and safety officers now? Then, oh my word! I know that you are the fire officer. She does everything. She'll put the fire Gosh. out. She'll carry out the building. <gasps> oh, Dominique says my friend is making me a tiny toy out of crochet. Honestly, when I saw the boxes of these, I didn't realise they'd be this size. Look at this. They're dashened. They're beautiful, aren't they? They're so cute. <laughs> They're coming up in Yarn Lane, 12 o'clock. They are absolutely adorable. Oh, I'll hang around for that. I love them. Right, sorry. I go sit in the audience. Yeah. Audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can sit in the studio <laughs> audience, live studio audience. So here we have it, nearly there. So that's the pocket bag. Okay. Flip, Flip the coat over. over. This is the front, that's the back. Yeah. And excuse the... I need to get a plaster, I think. Um, that's, that's your way mm. in. Just slip stitch that bit down. And then what we're going to do is just sew around there to hold that pocket into place. Okay. Now, like I did on mine, you could put some bias binding on the edge of the pocket. Yeah. But you, don't, you don't need to. You could use a decorative stitch to go around there if you wanted. Oh, yeah. That so, would be lovely. depending on what your machine's got, the Duke has got 422 stitches. Oh, my word. Can you he knows his machine. It? Have you used them all? Everyone. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did find a nice stitch at the edge stitching, the edge stitch foot, which I did use on mine, which I'll come to in a bit. So, I think I've got plenty of time to go around this so yeah we've got plenty we've got of time. to try and feel where the edge is you could mark it with pins now I've, this is a white thread so it's going to really show up but I'd probably advise to use a matching thread okay so I'm just going to feel so at home ordinarily you would pin but pins aren't your friend today on I'm, it so I'm just going to wing it I'm just going to wing it you can feel it underneath though can't you yes Hopefully I'll catch it in. Is that? Oh yes, that's just a thread. For projects like this, it's, it's, I bet it's so useful having a huge, uh, like you know, a bigger throat space, that bigger sewing space in your extension table. Oh, absolutely! It's it's, it's quite heavy fabric. Yeah, to look and the bigger it gets, the more you get through the project, the bigger and heavier it gets. So it's very useful to have that extra space, and it's worth. It can sometimes be hard to manage the fabric. Do you know what I mean? To actually yeah. get it sitting 
if it, you'd be sitting down sewing it hopefully, but to sit there with bits of it on your lap and bits on the table, making sure the weight's not pulling it out from under the machine. So take your time in setting yourself down before you put the next row of stitching in to make sure you've got everything nice and flat. The machine you can see, um, the last few chances remaining on the Juki. Three feet worth £150, just so you know, it's missing that on the text. Uh, 2795 this is the machine that Mark uses at home. And it is a gorgeous machine. It does everything you want and everything you didn't know you needed it to do as well. Oh, oh I thought that was a good um, cut. There we go. That's, you know, considering I've just rushed that under the machine, that's not too No, bad. that looks great. So... I actually like having the contrast, especially if you are um, using a decorative stitch as well. It's nice to use a contrasting thread. Yes, absolutely. That little flap, you can just stitch down. You could do... If you can get it under your machine, you can yeah. just top stitch that into place. Oh, thank you very much. First I'll have the smaller to the one. Rescue. <laughs> thank um, you. Just one Mark oh, puts lovely. his cluster on. If you do want the pattern, there is still availability on the size 16 to 24 and uh, the uh, the 6 to 14. Um, there's different options. You can see the different length of sleeves, whether you want to do it completely sort of sleeveless as well. I suppose you could do that in a lovely cotton fabric as a bit of a kimono style. Yeah, you could certainly do a lightweight version as well. So you could, it, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be a, a double-sided fabric like, um, yeah. like this one is. You could choose like, I don't know, a denim yeah. or some kind of cotton that's woven maybe. Yeah. Or you could line it. <gasps> oh, you could pop nice. a lining on. That'd be beautiful. Um, just so you know, 6 to 14, most popular size at the moment. We are limited on that one, though. It's just £9.99. Your main graphic um, is, sorry, your 6 to 14. No, main graphic, that's your side graphic, 6 to 14. Your main graphic is 16 to 24, which is the most popular. They're both 9 99 It's just different sizes. Okay, are you all all right? Yes, I'm fine. First Thank you very much. First to the rescue. Yes, bless him. There we go, pockets in. The next thing you need to do is the belt loop. Ah, right, okay. Now this is where we're going to differ from the pattern again for the sake of the bulky fabric. Well, it's, it's quite a nice chunky belt loop, isn't it? It is. So this is, that's the piece you'll get, right? Uh, which you'll cut out. Yeah. Now what it will ask you to do is to fold it in half and press it, then fold it into the middle and then fold it over and stitch it down. That's a bit too much to get through. Even the with the juke, I think. I it did might try be. it, and also because it's so thick, it doesn't want to lay that flat. No. If you choose to do a different fabric, you may well be able to do that without any problems. Right, what's your hack? My hack is just to fold it in half, give that a good press with the steam iron, and put a stitch. Now, I use my overcasting foot which on the Juki is stitch number 7 or 22. And it does a bit of an overlocker kind of job, but just with the two threads. Nice. And it sews a zigzag, but casts it round the edge of the fabric at the same time. Lovely. There's a special foot to use for that as well. I think it's foot C. Oh, if, there if you go. The he knows his stuff, doesn't he? Uh, or you could just do a zigzag, or just a straight stitch, or a decorative stitch if you wish. Right. And then you just sew that on like you would your, your butt loops on your dressing gown. So I top stitched it. Uh, there. Find where your waist is, where you want it positioned. That's it. It does mark it on the pattern. Oh, does it? Yeah. Brilliant. And then you just top stitch that down and that's your belt loop in oh, place. Lovely. So you measure where your waist is or just follow what's on the pattern if yeah. you wish. You may not, because of course you've got the pocket, if you do that pocket it's got to fit above that. Yeah. But you may not have to do that. So that, once you've done the other pocket, that's the main part of the coat body done itself. Gosh. So it isn't something, there aren't that many pieces to it really, are there? No, not it's really. You've got two fronts, a back, you've got the sleeves, and you do, you, there is a great long worm you can put around the edge if you're doing that, but I, I do not If you're using boil wool, you don't need to. No. You don't no. need that trim. There's a step I love on these kind of th things, that's making the belt. So this, this is a fun bit to yeah. make, because it's not, very, it's not very complicated. So you get two pieces. They have a nice point at the end, like that. Right. So there they're about go. pattern pieces. Yep. Yeah. Pattern pieces for that. You sew it down the middle there. Press the seams open. And then what you do, now this is probably the thickest part of mine, so take it steady over this join. You'll just pin it right sides together, or so the seams go to the inside. You'll whiz it all the way round, 
down there and round the other side as well, but leave a hole so you can pull it through. And then to give it a press, and on the one behind you, you'll see it's actually got some top stitching around. I just managed to be able to get it through the machine to oh, put wow. some nice top stitching on it. That looks really decorative as well, doesn't it? The beautiful top stitching. One yeah. second, and we'll show you nice and closely. It's just in a matching thread, but because of the bulk of the fabric, it actually really pops, doesn't it? And that looks really nice. There, there you go. go. Oh, yeah, you can just about see that. Yeah. And that's gone through your machine. I mean, that is bulky. So let's do, let's do this right. little bit. So this is a bit that's actually quite nice to um, use your clips for. When I, this is a similar method to how I make my twillies, actually. But it's just like making a cord for a dressing gown. And it's got a point at the end. But, you, they, you know, it could be any shape you like, really. You could do this with a toweling or something like that and have a dressing gown as well. If you love the pattern, it's so comfy. Now, I was concerned about actually pulling it the right way round because it's so thick, but actually it wasn't a problem. I, I got the prim turning tool. You know, the, I think you've, uh -huh. you've demonstrated that, haven't you, with the, with the little tube and the, yep. and the stick. I don't use that. It can't go through this. Oh, OK. <laughs> I thought, oh, I could use my prim turning tool, but it's just too, it's just too thick. But usually that's my that's my go to tool for turning these things. Have you got lots of little gadgets now in your sewing room then? Well, you, you know, working here and doing yeah. these, you do think I need one of those. Now. Yeah, it does make you, life easy, doesn't it? I mean, turning tools and things like that. That's too short to be sitting trying to turn through little roller loops without one. <laughs> I wish I had one when I was doing the roller loops on the sewing bee. Because those hook things are very good, but. They don't always, it's a bit fiddly, aren't they? Yeah. It sews an absolute dream, doesn't it? I think a lot of people get scared about the sort of weight of boiled wool, but actually it presses beautifully, it sews it does. really well, it looks a fortune, it looks really expensive. It's best win -win. To, to use a steam iron as well. Best to okay. get a bit of steam on it, I think, to, to, to press the wool nicely. Electric will do as well, but you get a, it's a bit more uh, tougher on the fabric if you're doing it with the steam iron, you sort of get that nice finish. Let's just go around the corner. Even it's, it lifts the foot for you, doesn't it? I love that. Have you got yours all set up to now, you know, lift the foot and do all this? Do you use the foot pedal with the, there's a quick access button on the side of the no, foot, No, it was the foot pedal for mine. I leave it on the default, which is the back stitch, which sometimes I use as well. That's so cool, isn't they it? They are, aren't they? They think of so many things. Very clever. So you're without, being a gad without being sort of um, gizmos and all singing, dancing, it's still got that industrial sort of feel to it, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. So you can, you can be as complicated with it or as, or as simple yeah. as you like. Now, make sure you leave a big enough hole because you've got to pull through quite a lot of fabric. I haven't pinned this other side. Right, you're going through quite a few different layers here, aren't you? Yeah, so, if, so there's, I'm going through four up. layers at this middle point, so just go through it. It does get through it okay. I suppose you've got to do it slow, haven't you? Absolutely. On the thick bits, go nice and slow. Oh, who's that? Helen. Helen said hit it with a hammer to reduce the bulk. A hammer? Yeah. Oh, that'd be good for getting your aggression out. Like you do with your jeans, like you do with your denim, absolutely. And yeah, good to be able to uh, get any aggression out you might have. Just write 2020 on the <laughs> seams and then... Ah! And <laughs> do you have any, like, so we were talking earlier on with Catherine about superstition, um, different things, rituals that people do in going into a new year. So we heard that somebody has coal, wood and a sixpence on their back door. Really? Leaving all the, uh, the doors open. Yeah. Having a, wasn't there a, something about having a strange dark man, a, a dark haired man come in, a stranger, um, come in with, again, coal and bread. How, where do you find a stranger from at midnight on, I don't on know. the 31st of December? Yeah, it's a and thing. how does that work with, with tier four? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
I just imagine Kieran now coming round to everybody's house. My, uh, my husband's got dark curly hair. He has. <laughs> I'll, no, I'll, I'll see. There's lots of things I can't say now, so I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Eileen's asked, "What? How much fabric you need for size 16 to 24? Four and a half meters is the most that you will need if you're doing the long sleeve options. There's different options, you see. There's um, the gilet option if you want to do it sleeveless completely or short sleeves, or so it depends on what option you're doing. But four and a half meters, you'll definitely not need more than that." for the larger size, which is size 20. Hope that happens. So I've cut the corners off the ends now. I don't trim it anywhere else because it doesn't really matter. Okay. But I do trim it down there so you can get a nice, uh, a nice point to the corners. I don't know whether I'll get time to do this, but you'll turn it round. It actually isn't too bad to turn around. I won't do this all now because frankly, it's not very interesting telly. <laughs> oh no, it looks great. It's I've got great. a pin still in there. I'm stealing a sewing bee pin, a sewing street pin. Turn it round, top stitch it down. And uh, the opening, if you're top stitching the belt, will close that down. Otherwise you can just put a few slip stitches yeah. in there just to close that up. Amazing. And the last thing to do is the sleeves. So your sleeves, are they put on in the round or on a flat? They are, yes. In the round, okay. They're, they're putting in the round, so you'll, you'll sew your side everything. seams up with the pocket in, of course, yeah. if you put in the pocket in. And then you'll have your sleeves. Now, I did have a bash. I did find this bias binding that does sort of sort of go with that, I yeah, think. Yeah, it does. It really nice. Was that pre-made bias binding? It or? is, yes. I would happened to bought a big roll of it really cheaply, so I had it knocking around. Because doesn't it say in the instructions that like three packs? It mysteriously says three packs, okay. but how much is in a pack, I don't know. I don't know right. how much they're expecting, so it doesn't specify. So if you do want to do bias binding, you might need to just have a measure. measure. But I'd like to put on a big roll, then you can use it for all yeah. sorts of other things. Yeah, it is handy, isn't it? And as with always with all bias binding, there isn't a wrong or right side to this, but you sew it to the wrong side or one side of the sleeve, flip it over, and you could either machine it in place or you could uh, just slip stitch it into place. But it's on the sleeve, you won't see it. It's just a nice little finish if you like. I also didn't finish the ends of the sleeves, and again, because it's board wool, you don't notice. So do you not need to finish those at all? It does give an allowance to fold it up. So you could fold the sleeve, the end of the sleeves up as you uh, turn them up if you wish. Right, OK. Um, but I looked at it and thought, well, it doesn't really need it. You could put a bit of biased binding or some trim around the edge as yeah. another option if you wish. Yeah, you don't it's need to. It's entirely up to you. Oh, the red is gorgeous, isn't it? It's been the most popular, by the way. It has been has the most it? popular. That doesn't surprise me. It's so lovely. Well, you are a bit of a trendsetter, aren't you? It was when well. everyone saw the photograph of you wearing it. <laughs> it is gorgeous. Look, can I remind you how amazing Mark looked in his coat earlier on this morning? <laughs> Clive has one similar, doesn't he? He made one. It was a, it was a, a inspired, shall we say, by Vivian Westwood. So we went oh. into Vivian Westwood's shop and he thought, you really like this coat, which isn't dissimilar to this, actually. No, it's not. And he thought, a thousand pounds, I can make that myself, thank you very much. So yeah. there's me taking pictures of him wearing it in the shop and he went home and he made it. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. It's amazing. So for those who are a little bit new to putting sleeves in, I like to pin it. If you're doing it on shirts, because it's the same method as putting the sleeve in for the shirt mm -hmm. I was doing earlier, you can put a, a gathering stitch around it and pull it up slightly. Yeah. That's another way of doing it. So there is, an, there is a front and a back to the sleeve with the notches, so make sure you get it the right Is there way. a universal front and back notch system with the sleeve? Generally, one notch for the front, two notches for the back. That's right. generally how it works, unless someone's decided to do something else. <laughs> but usually that's what people do. Ah, Mary, I know you're in America, so I wonder if it's the same over here, but she said bias binding normally comes in three yards per pack. Ah, uh, so maybe it's an American thing then, yeah. because over here we wouldn't get it in a pack. No. You, they'd say, how much do you want, dear? <laughs> how much <laughs> do you want? Buy the uh, half metre or just buy the, yeah. the yard? Or, or if you're lucky, you might buy one in a sale bin, which is what I did for, <laughs> for like, I think it was like three or four pounds. Brilliant. Thought, Clive said, what are you going to do with that? So, I don't know, know but it's but a it moustache, <laughs> that's it, it's too much of a bargain. I know Alison Marion, who will be watching, she's got a bias binding maker. Like mm. a, we've obviously got the... Um, oh, the, like a machine. But she's got a machine, <sighs> yeah. That's posh, isn't it? That is posh. She does get through a lot of binding, though. I think she said, did she do 125 metres in one sitting once? No, what she made? Yeah. 
what, press the button and, and off it goes. <laughs> no, I think making it. I think she actually did it. I think she, uh, yeah. It's crazy, she was showing off it? yesterday, telling us. But showing there are off. companies that will sell stuff that's reclaimed from right. landfill as well. Oh, I've, yeah, I've I bought that. some from the Worcestershire Resource Exchange. Okay. And, uh, and they've got, well, it's, it's a bit random what you get. You can't guarantee what you're going to get, but it's usually really cheap and quite often for charity, not always. That yeah, you love does. upcycling, don't you? I do, I, I do. It's very good because you can, these people, this stuff gets thrown out. And it's usually yeah. designers because it's, not in their range anymore, they don't sell it, they don't want it, it's got minor yeah. fault on it somewhere else in the batch and they'll just get rid of the whole lot. Fantastic. Anyway, that's that's digressing. So <laughs> I've got my sleeve. sleeve, I've got my sleeve the right way round mm -hmm. and I've got my coat the right way round. So we'll just poke it the correct way through and then we're going to start pinning. So I haven't pressed the seams open but press your seams open. Dominique said, I put money out by my front door. Just a few pennies she's put in brackets. <laughs> um, so I'll have money throughout the year coming, uh, coming in um, throughout the year. She says, it works. It works. Amazing. Maybe that's what we should have all done. That's what I haven't been doing right yeah. there every <laughs> <That's> year. <it>. <laughs> <laughs> we all need to take a leave out Dominique's book. So the first bits I pin are the bottom seam. This is the underarm seam uh, on this side there. That's the underarm. That's at the shoulder. I pin those two bits first. This is just how I like to do it. Then I pin the notches at the bottom. And then you've got to ease in the rest of the sleeve. Now one bit will be easier than the other um, because you get more ease. Why do you think it, it scares people doing it round in a... I think it's because it's a circular tube it shape. It is. The clever boffin that is Claire Bradley, the winner of the sewing bee, uh -huh. and she said, you're putting a concave into a convex. Mm -hmm. It's very clever, isn't it? See, I wouldn't have been able well, to Well, we say those words. it's like a happy smile or a sad smile, isn't it? <laughs> yes. So you put a one into the concave other. Concave, so convex. Yeah, so smile. that's the, she, well, she's a, she's a, no, she tells you off if you call her a surgeon. She's not a surgeon, she's a, what's the other one? A consultant. Oh, wow. So, have you kept in touch with Claire? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. She oh. was drinking wine last night, watching the sewing bee, oh. waiting for the new year to come in. Oh, you're on a WhatsApp group, are you? I'd love yeah. to just muscle and, in and on Joe's that. And Joe's on the WhatsApp group as well. So Joe he, is? Oh, that's so yeah, cool. Yeah, he pipes up occasionally. He only lives down the road from us, doesn't he? He's somewhere in Birmingham, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he was doing his Radio 2 show, but live from Birmingham. He's uh, Hannah's neighbour. I think Hannah's um, tried to follow him a few times. And not on what social media. I'm not talking <laughs> about on social media this time. I not think she's tried to follow him. <laughs> the more pins you can get into this, the better result you'll get. Right. So you will get little wrinkles like that. But Let's see. Let's see, Elliot. Thank you. Can you just show that? So any of the I'll spin it around so, you, so you're looking at it the way you'll wear it. So that's the bottom. That's the underarm. That's the shoulder. Yeah. And that's the back, that's the front. Uh -huh. But you're sewing at one and a half centimetres inside, so you won't notice those those bits. So don't worry about <coughs> easing those out all entirely. No, no you won't you won't manage it. So I, I'm off gonna... comes the extension table. So you say you leave your extension table on unless you need to take it off. And at this point, you want the free arm. I, I want it off. You might be. Some people might like to do it, but you can pop the whole sleeve round the end on its nose. Oh, that makes it easier. You've just got a lot of pins to take out here, Mark. I have. Or you just do what Clive tells me not to and run so over, over them. <gasps> no, please don't. Not on television. Susan says, OMG, I didn't realise the llama turns out that big. I oh, want one. Susan, it's amazing, isn't it, this llama? <gasps> Ten minutes till yarn lane, by the way. All of the Nitty Critters kits are... On, are they on pre-order on Yarn Lane yet? No, not yet, not yet, not yet. You have to wait until 12 o'clock. Please be careful with those pins. They're not your friends today, are they, Mark? These no. Pins? Now, I'm just going through the bulky bit, which is the underarm seam. Okay. So, like earlier, take your time going through that bit. I think I'm all right, yeah. And it, there is a bit of management of the fabric, so you've got to keep making, adjusting it, popping your arm in, giving it a tug, just make sure it's sitting nicely because it's very easy to get a bit of the coat caught up in it or a bit of the sleeve and then you end up with a pucker. We don't want puckered sleeves, do we? 
But that's what unpickers were invented for. I better take my pins out before someone tells me off. Do you use Clive's bridge water stitch remover? Oh, what's that? Is that the, the, the lady shave? The lady shave, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'll call it by his real name, the lady shave. I do, actually. <laughs> and um, I sometimes what I do is I started off unpicking the end bit manually and then I get the lady shave. <laughs> And I'll um, and I'll go along. Please like don't use an actual lady shave, Chad. You'll probably end up ruining your fabric. Don't listen to Mark. Or if your husband's been naughty, you could use his beard trimmer instead. <laughs> we haven't got any stitch removers, have we? No. Because sewing sewing street uh, customers don't make mistakes. That's what it is. Oh, that's it. Absolutely. It's just the guests, isn't it? <laughs> it's just the guests from the sewing bee. <laughs> We've had a picture. A picture? Hello, Alison. Alison Marion sent in a photo. Oh, in fact, actually, sorry, I was wrong. It's 120 metres plus bias binding in the, in the making. There you go. That's what it looks like. Oh, my giddy aunt. <laughs> I told you she's she got a, skills. Is she a quilter? Um, she's everything, isn't she, oh, okay. oh, Alison? Does everything. All round Wonder Woman, and she bakes. There's a cake no. in the in the fridge. Cupcake, have one. She needs her own channel. We had twelve she, between the four of us yesterday. She so. needs her own channel. She does. She does. She does. No, in fact, she doesn't. She, we're keeping her. We're keeping oh. her. <laughs> there. So I've managed to go round. Oh, I think that's just in time, isn't it? Uh, here we go. Oh, let's, let's see. I've got a pin in it still. Yeah, be careful you're leaving pins in. Especially if this is the one that um, Kat's going to have. <laughs> <laughs> there we oh, go. Oh, that's you know, gorgeous. That's not too bad, is it? That looks so smart as well, doesn't it? It's going to look amazing um, with the other sleeve in as well. <laughs> I haven't got. There you go. One sleeve on, one sleeve off. That's something that Vivian Westwood would do, maybe. Nice. Looking good, Mark. Okay. Maybe flip the one side over your shoulder like a scarf, you're thinking. Oh, yes, I could do. There we go. Perfect. Looking good. Half a coat. Who needs a full coat? They're so last season full coats, <laughs> aren't they? And there's my inside out belt. That is brilliant. It's inside out, but you get the idea. Have we got um, a caption this photo ready? Here we go. Pose. There you go, thank you very much. Looking What do we do with the sleeve? No, no he's going to put it on his head. Go on, go on. No. I don't know Happy New Year, everybody. This is what this year is going to be all about at Sewing Street. Oh, there you go. Strike a pose. Got it. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for always giving us great oh, content for our blooper reel. <laughs> Um, anything else that you wanted to mention about it? Mark? No, I don't think. Have fun with it. It's a great <laughs> coat, and I think it will actually. It's good for for men and women. It's a bit of an yeah. Inverness cape. It is. It's quite unisex, I think. Yeah, I agree. Particularly if you're going to do it in like the blue or the grey or the camel. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Really smart. Thank you so so much. Pleasure. Um, and thank you, of course, for welcoming the new year with us. Yeah. Thank you for going to bed nice and early <laughs> for us. Oh, it made a change. Uh, when are you back on with us, I Mark? I think it's the 31st. 31st, 31st. And I have to ask as well, when's Clive back in, do you know? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I want to say the 9th. Oh, he'll be in next week soon then. I think it's the 9th, but don't quote me on that. All right then. Check well, we'll his Instagram. He'll yeah. be on there probably. Brilliant. Thank you so, so much. As always, we love having you here. Aww. We love, love, love having you Thank you very much. Year. Happy New Year. And we'll see you soon. Uh, right, let's have a quick recap before. Remember, we jump over to Yarn Lane. If you are watching on the website or on Facebook, in a moment you will need to switch over to the web, uh, the Yarn Lane website or the Yarn Lane Facebook page. Uh, let's have a quick roundup, though. The pattern that this amazing coat came from, um, size 16 to 24, it's a slim, uh, I always keep saying this, a simplicity. It's just the easiest, it's simplicity, but it's really difficult for me to say apparently today. Um, different options, A, B and C. <laughs> Um, beautiful cape design, great wrap belt as well, so really lovely and flattering, but just so comfy and lovely and warm, especially in the board wall that we're, option we're, we're talking about today. Although there are plenty of different options as well. Tweeds, oh, there's a lovely tweed. If somebody messaged in saying that they were allergic to wool and did we have anything sort of similar that would be nice on the web, there is a burgundy 
gorgeous tweed that's got a gold lurex running through just slightly it's not glittery glittery <laughs> Or a fleece. Oh, yeah, fleece would be a good idea as well. Have a look and um, see if you can find some fleece. We've got the 6 to 14, which is this one. Uh, size 6 to 14. Your pattern is just 9 99 today. £9.99. Very limited on both sizes. Very, very limited. It's classic, isn't it? Making patterns since 1927. One of the classic um, brands. Now, bundle. We've got a few bundles available, well, three bundles that are available, starting with the red. Um, obviously, I haven't got four and a half meters here on the desk because it would just, um, yeah, it would, it would swallow us. So if you do want the bundle, you get four and a half meters of this gorgeous red, which is enough to do the larger size with the longest sleeves, the longer length um, of the coat. Of course, you can adapt it to completely fit and suit you. Four and a half meters of your wine color wool, which is the one that Mark was modeling earlier on, um, that we absolutely <laughs> loved. Uh, 97 99, four and a half meters is enough for the largest size. Uh, we also have, there he is. Oh, he's so, oh, we love Mark. <laughs> I'm a great believer in fate. And like you say, there's, oh, there's certain, um, Sometimes your lives sort of cross paths in random ways. And I met Mark this, well, last year. Well, not last year, the year before. The year before last now, before he was, um, before he was on Sewing Bee, through completely different sort of, completely different things, means for um, music stuff. And it's just so lovely that he's now part of the uh, Sewing Street family. What am I doing with my llama? Stay. You look as if we're introducing the cartoons. Stay. I'm going to sit him up there again. Oh, he's amazing, isn't he? He's amazing. Right, the camel colour, which is the one that Mark was working with. Oh, Mark, uh, Clive is on on the 9th. It is the 9th. It is the 9th. What day is that? What day is the 9th? It's a Saturday. It's not me again. Clive, stop avoiding me, Clive. Clive um, it will be on with John. There you go. He's on with John. Uh, £97.99, which is four and a half metres of your camel colour. Uh, we do have them available uh, by the half metre as well. They're on the website if you do want a certain size. The only other one that we have in a bundle is this one, which is your silver. Again, unisex. This would be great for a gent as well. Yeah, Elliot's saying this is the one I'd have. Amazing, 97 pounds and 99 pence. That's for four and a half meters of your silver, lovely gray colorway, uh, which is again, absolutely classic. Staple part of your wardrobe and think it's something that you would wear for years and years and years to come. Loads of people are gonna compliment you on that beautiful waterfall style cape at the front as well. Okay, have a look on the website for the blue and the teal by the half meter. Thank you so much for spending your New Year's Day with us. Don't forget, Yarn Lane is going to continue for the next hour with Claire from Nitty Critters. Just a dip in the, the water of what we've got coming up on the show. I mean, we've got the llama, we've got the dachshund, we've got a flamingo, a unicorn, a monkey, a teddy bear. We've got all sorts coming up for anybody who loves crochet or wants to get into crochet as their New Year's resolution, um, then we're going to make it possible. So, tomorrow's show on Sewing Street, you've got lovely John and he'll be um, terrorising our cat. Um, cat's here tomorrow. <laughs> cat and porn. Not, not our actual... <laughs> pet cats we haven't got a studio cat just yet um uh eight o'clock yep your eyes are not deceiving you cat that's put together liberty bundles oh honestly it's gonna be amazing it, the, the, the uh the bundles are, are so gorgeous and um you'll love it from the emporium range at nine o'clock we've got the hon honeycomb basket which is with janice oh you're gonna have such a good day tomorrow so janice is here um that one i believe is another beth another made with love from beth um pattern that is the same uh, quilt designer that we had from earlier on with catherine really popular that completely sold out today so do make sure you watch that at nine o'clock ten o'clock Oh my word, if you love a bargain, if you are normally a little bit of a, a later riser and you miss out on the early bird specials, we're going to do an early bird roundup show, lots of saving at 10 o'clock. 11 o'clock, we did some uh, quilt as you go yesterday. We're going to show you in action with a demonstration how to do quilt as you go. We've got pet placemats, the fish and the bone, dogs and cat lovers, all of the, uh, the, the, the kits from yesterday with Alice and Marion sold out. So if you did love those pet projects, 
Quilt as you go tomorrow with lovely Janice. And then look at this clearance hour at 12 o'clock. If you love bargains, oh my word, make the most of it. How I'm missing it all, aren't I? I'm missing it all. You've got lovely John Scott tomorrow. Um, as I'll be over on the afternoon on our sister channel jewelry maker. But Anyway, it's been a pleasure to be with you. Enjoy your New Year's Day. Stick with us. Now is the time to stay where you are on Freeview Sky or where you're watching on your telly. But we're about to put all of the kits live on yarnlane.com. Head over there and I'll see you on the Facebook page as well. Same posting packaging, same account. We're just going to be learning a new crochet skill. So stay where you are. We'll see you after this. <laughs> 